Ladies and gentlemen, a good evening to you and welcome to the WCHR Hunter Spectacular. It's about to get underway here with our opening ceremonies in the lead up to a 6.30 first horse. Again, this is the Saturday night feature event that is the centerpiece of the WCHR program events that happen here in Wellington. Ever since 1997, this Hunter Spectacular has been one of the major highlights of the entire season on the Hunter landscape. WCHR program recognizes recognizes riders who have received the highest single numerical score throughout the week in each category during this week's events. And we're going to start things off by recognizing the high score riders who will receive a WCHR jacket. And we'll start off the uh, evening here by welcoming our first entry in, and that will be represented by Nick Hannis, who took the uh, top honors in our 3-6 handy section in the uh, green division and they're all going to be joining us here and uh, we'll be uh, welcoming Nick to the arena as well as all of our high score award winners at this time and so we'll uh, salute each and every one of them and again this is a big part of the lead up to our WCHR feature the Hunter Spectacular of Palm Beach. While our presenters are making their way in, we will have uh, Laura Fetterman joining us, center ring for the uh, Champion Equine Insurance Trophy, donated by uh, Laura to recognize the developing professional rider with the highest numerical score from the qualifying sections this week. Champion Equine Insurance is dedicated to protecting your equine investment with over 29 years of professional equine insurance experience. Laura Fetterman and Champion Equine Insurance offers unparalleled knowledge, integrity, and customer Customer service to provide the best protection for your champion and the peace of mind you deserve. Laura joins us to present Champion Equine Insurance trophies once again to all of our top contestants here this evening. So Nick Hannis once again taking the uh, top call as the high scoring professional and he scored a 94 in the 3-6 green handy round. Salute again to Nick Hannis on one of our high score awards here tonight. We do have a developing professional rider high score award honor as well available for the three foot green stake and it was an 88 point score that came in through the efforts of Jordan LeBeau and so they'll be making their way in as well for one of our high score awards. Jordan LeBeau piloting Emerald Silver and again stepping up for the Developing Professional Rider High Score Award with the 88-point score earned in the three-foot green stake. Coming up next will be the winner out of our high score amateur 3-6 section. 
And we actually do have two winners there. We'll start things off with a 92-point score that was earned in the younger amateur owner 3-6 division. Caroline Signorino taking that honor. Along with Caroline Signorino, we'll also honor our older amateur owner winner, also scoring a 92, and that is Mr. John Ingram. John stepping away as the high score amateur out of the 3-6 division from the 36 and over category. And now we'll move along to our high scoring amateur owner from the 3 foot 3 divisions. In her absence, a salute to uh, Catherine Cowie who scored a 91 in the younger amateur 3-3 section over the handy course. And also Callie Seaman who is in fact with us here tonight scoring her 91 in the 3-3 uh, amateur 18 to 35 division. So a tie in those 3-3 three, three amateurs. Callie Seaman is with us, and in her absence, again, a salute as well to Catherine Cowie. Salute also to our junior winners out of the 3-6 junior division from the large section. It was Christian Dominguez who scored a 92. The World Championship Hunter Ryder program, of course. We do have Luis Sirio and Carl Whedon with us to honor our guests this evening. Christian Dominguez stepping away as the 3-6 large junior high scoring entry. We also have a high scoring entry out of the 3 foot 3 juniors as an 89 was the high score in the 16 and 17 year old state class and it was Caroline Moore who earned the honor. Now, as our uh, individuals have stepped away from the winner's circle there, of course, that high-scoring professional Nick Hannes with a uh, 94 in the 3-6 green handy division. Jordan LeBeau had the 88 in the 3-foot green stake class. Caroline Signorino and John Ingram from the younger and older 3-6 amateurs both scoring a 92. We had Catherine Cowley and Callie Seaman each with a 91 in the 3-3 younger amateur sections. Then Christian Dominguez from the 3-6 large juniors with a 92. And again, Caroline Moore from the 3-3 older junior stake with an 89. And there is the class of 2024 for our Hunter Spectacular for that group photo. One more time, a collective round of applause for all of our winners in the high score award category. And again, a thanks to Champion Equine Insurance for providing us with the high score awards here in 2024. Yeah, Pennsylvania native, a lifelong horse lover, uh, Peter Wetherill. Well, it's an accomplished horseman with several national championships to his name. Mr. Wetherill was a supporter of the U.S. team and owner of 2008 Olympic gold medalist Cedric. This time we ask that you please direct your attention to the video board. Here with us tonight to present the Peter Weatherill Cup are Luis Sirio, chair of the WCHR task force. Yeah, Sissy Wicks is uh, not with us uh, here, but a lifelong friend and longtime trainer of Peter Weatherill. Sissy donated the cooler awarded to McQueen this evening. 
Now tonight, it's our pleasure to honor McQueen with the Peter Wetherill Cup as the WCHR Hunter of the Year. Here accepting are the owners of McQueen, Walkenback Equestrian LLC, owners Pam Lanny and Paige Walkenback, as well as trainer James Hagman and rider Nick Hannes. Adding to what was a stellar year, a walking back equestrian LLC entry, McQueen is the recipient of the 2023 WCHR Hunter of the Year honor and the Peter Weatherill Cup. Yeah, the 10-year-old uh, Dutch Hornblad at Gelding uh, kicked off the year by topping the $100,000 USHJA WCHR West Coast Hunter Spectacular with Nick Hannes in the Irons. McQueen continued his winning ways there throughout the season, topping the 3-6 and 3-9 Platinum Performance USHJA Green Hunter Incentive Championship with an untouchable 11.5 point lead and gathering green confirmation tricolors at Devon, Capital Challenge, Pennsylvania National Horse Show, and the Washington International Horse Show. Capping off the year, the Gelding was awarded the Jeffrey Katz Trophy at WCHR Finals for their efforts in the WCHR competition. Congratulations again to uh, the Walkenback family, owners Paige Walkenback, Lanny Walkenback, and Pam Walkenback, as well as trainer James Hagman and rider Nick Hannis, as McQueen receives the honors of the Peter Weatherill Cup as the 2023 WCHR Hunter of the Year. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we also have another uh, special award in honor of a great horsewoman, successful amateur rider, and an extremely generous individual who was instrumental in the establishment of the American Hunter Jumper Foundation and all the good that it has done. And we'd like to turn your attention back to the screen again as we honor the late Kavar Kerr. And again, uh, we are honoring the uh, memory of Kavar Kerr with the Kavar Kerr Distinguished Service Award. And it is our honor to present the USHJA Kavar Kerr Distinguished Service Award to Louise Riggio here tonight. Accepting the award and joining her for the presentation is Stephanie and Leo Bulger, Scott Evans, Louise Serio, of course, the chair and found, co founder of the WCHR program, and Carl Whedon, vice chair of the WCHR task force. And congratulations again to Louise Riggio, and thanks for her service to our sport. One more time, a salute to Louise Riggio. And again, the Kavar Kerr Distinguished Service Award is hers this evening in honor of all of the great work she has done throughout the course of her involvement with the equestrian world. Again, committed to the future of horse sports through her nonprofit involvement and as an owner, Riggio is on the Equestrian Aid Foundation Board, instrumental in the Foundation's Disaster Relief Fund back in 2018 and its COVID emergency response programs in 2020 and in 2021. 
and of course also serves as president of Green is the New Blue, a nonprofit working to address issues of environmental sustainability across equestrian activities. She's a firm believer in the healing potential of horses shown through her support of therapeutic riding programs and an ardent supporter of animal rescue organizations as well. As you can see there, uh, she is making her exit with the Kavar Kerr Distinguished Service Award right now. Of course, none of our uh, WCHR programs would be possible without the great support of some incredible sponsors. And we include in that group Parlanti and the new Parlanti Vegan Collection. Parlanti Kent and Malmo models reduce rubbing while increasing the feel, breathability, and comfort of your ride. They, invisit, they invite you to visit the Parlanti store today. Try out a pair of vegan booths and they blend unmatched technology and fashion together in perfect harmony. Parlani has mastered the art of the craft, and they're the official riding boot of the United States Hunter Jumper Association, and also trusted by the best riders in the world. As we continue to work our way through the presentations here, we also want to thank CWD Cellier, the official saddle of the USHJA, who have supported the USHJA as a sponsor since 2016. CWD is a sports saddle maker primarily known for innovation for the welfare of the horse and performance of riders. Ten years ago, the company spent more than $2 million to develop their dynamic tree, aiming to provide the perfect mix of flex and pressure distribution for the horse's comfort. And since then, the company has launched the Mademoiselle Saddle, the first hunter-jumper saddle developed specifically for the female rider. CWD's commitment to high-quality leather and a vegetable tanning process sets their saddles apart in longevity. We also want to thank for their support Neutrina and their Pro Elite Feeds, who set the standard in ultra-premium nutrition. And now they're raising the bar with Pro Elite Supplements, from healthy top line to muscle development to joint support and more. You can strengthen your winning edge by creating a dynamic duo of feeds and supplements. And there's only one best and one way to get the best of both worlds with Pro Elite. Visit ProEliteHorseFeed.com to find out what separates them from the rest. And also, thanks to Essex Classics. For more than 35 years, they've led the way in show shirts with classic elegant styling, iconic trims, and state-of-the-art performance fabrics that regulate your body temperature to keep you cool and refreshed. The brand behind the original hidden snap collar design, Essex continues to raise the bar, combining function, expert tailoring, and style for an impeccable presentation in the show ring. Continuing on now with our opening ceremonies on the way to the start of our Palm Beach Hunter Spectacular and the first horse on course at 6.30. Here is our next special guest of the evening. Yeah, the WCHR Gala Committee has uh, decided to start the tradition of featuring the previous year's winner on the invitation to the Spectacular Hunt Gala. Now, along with that tradition, the artwork created is to be gifted to the rider of the previous year's winning horse. Now, this year, the artwork by artist Tori Billis is being presented to John French, rider of Milagro, the 2023 WCHR Palm Beach Hunter Spectacular Champion. Now, the WCHR Gala Committee would also like to take this time to thank all of their donors, sponsors, and attendees. And without your support, this event would not be possible, and we hope you enjoy the night. Here with us to present the artwork is Luis Sirio, chair of the WCHR Task Force, and Carl Whedon, vice chair of the WCHR Task Force.
As we take a look back through the history of the spectacular event, and it's about to commence here in 2024. Of course, it dates all the way back to 1997 when the first ever Palm Beach Hunter Spectacular took place. And there are certainly some big names in the sport. Starting off with the first ever winner, Liza Talon, Monday morning. She was actually the owner and rider of that inaugural victor back in 1997 at a very young age, just coming out of her junior years and doing so well against some of the best, as always, here in Wellington, Florida. In fact, Wellington, dating back all the way into the 70s, has been a big name and the collecting place for all of the top-level horses and riders, and not just in the hunter sport. The jumpers, of course, polo, dressage, and more have found Wellington, their winter home for decades now. And of course, the Winter Equestrian Festival is the uh, centerpiece of all of that action. So it makes it a fitting location for an event such as the Palm Beach Hunter Spectacular. Along with Liza Tal, Elizabeth Bross, and Hudson, Clara Linder with High Hearts, Cody Baird, and Most Wanted took us to the start of the new millennium. Then we had several wins in a row by Strapless, three of them under the control of Emily Williams, and then Clara Linder took over with her own ride there in 2004. And of course, Louise Sirio herself, a victor here in the Palm Beach Spectacular back in 2005. And of course, many more that we'll be talking about throughout the course of the evening. And another one to be named here in 2024 with the events getting closer and closer to a start here at 6.30. As we talk about the history of this specific event, we should also go back a little further and talk about the history of the hunter sport itself. You may be curious if uh, maybe you're a newcomer to the horse world as to why these are called hunters. Well, indeed, you may actually hunt game from horseback. And fox hunting, of course, has been around for centuries now. If you were actually out on the fox hunt, chasing along with the hounds to keep that fox coyote or other vermin away from a, a farmer's livestock, you'd need a horse that could comfortably, safely, and efficiently overcome large areas of open ground as well as obstacles that may be in your path. And of course, derived from the original fox hunting sport is the show hunter sport that's on center uh, field display here tonight under the lights. And we're going to have a special presentation coming up for you to uh, sort of pay a tribute to the history of the show hunter sport and, of course, the ages-old sport of fox hunting. So in honor of the history of our sport, ladies and gentlemen, starting in 1979, the Palm Beach Hounds, dedicated to the sport and traditions of riding to hounds in South Florida, they're a private group who enjoy horses and the great outdoors. Their members have a strong appreciation for watching hounds work, experiencing their horse's natural agility on the hunt field, and the beauty of the natural landscape here in South Florida. They have an active social club that hosts an array of activities and equestrian events throughout the year and they welcome any level of riding their members can choose what kind of experience they want to have the hunt offers everything from wild to mild if you will you choose the pace of the ride and they provide the opportunity to get out of the arena and have fun doing something different but something that harkens back to the days of old a horse trained as a fox hunter will become a better show hunter by exposing them to many obstacles that cannot be duplicated in the show arena and their group holds hunt exercises formal hunts and hunt clinics in Palm Beach County, Marin County, and throughout Florida. They also sponsor educational and fundraising events, as well as many social outings, and end their season with a formal black tie hunt ball. Non-riding social memberships are encouraged and available to everyone, and the group directs efforts towards the education and stewardship of preserved lands and wildlife in South Florida. Additionally, the Palm Beach Hounds promote the health and welfare of horses and hounds, and they focus on building camaraderie around the sport and traditions 
traditions of fox hunting. Palm Beach Hounds is recognized by uh, Masters of the Fox Hounds Association and members who have enjoyed the thrill of the chase for many years. The pack consists of approximately 20 couple or 40 crossbred fox hounds that go out twice weekly, Wednesdays and Saturdays. The season runs from November through the end of March. And their territories, mostly level with open fields, pine woods and banks and streams, and most jumps are two foot five inches and three inch coops are always optional. Uh, they uh, always welcome and accommodate all riding levels. Their uh, first flight is jumping mandatory. Those riders follow the huntsmen and hounds at speed through the territory. The second flight is for those who choose not to jump. They follow at a small distance and go around the most difficult obstacles. A slower paced third flight known as hilltoppers are available for beginners or green horses and usually go walk and trot and they stay on the trails. Anyone who can trail ride their horse can be a fox hunter, so you should keep that in mind as you consider whether or not you'd like to join the uh, Palm Beach Hounds. Hunting and social events are among the benefits for members and friends. They invite the community to join them at their hound benefit parties, hunt breakfast, stir up cups, and the year-end closing weekend and hunt ball, which is scheduled for next month, March 6th through 10th. And you can learn more about Palm Beach Hounds online at palmbeachhounds.com on Facebook and get weekly updates and photos. The master and huntsman of Palm Beach Hounds is Mr. Adam Brown. Also honorary whippers in are Ms. Jennifer Brown, Dr. Scott Traphagen, ex-master of Fox Hound, and Mrs. Patty Traphagen, Dina McCombs, and the honorary field masters include first flight, Ms. Carol Ann Marty, second flight, Ms. Annabelle Nicole, and third flight is Ms. Taylor Quick. Ladies and gentlemen, they pay tribute to the history of our sport in the show hunter world, and of course that is based on the sport, centuries old fox hunting. Let's hear it for the Palm Beach Hounds in our pre-show Parade of Hounds here on Saturday night. What a great look, and again, we encourage you to check it out. Maybe become a member yourself. PalmBeachHounds.com, as well as the Palm Beach Hounds Facebook page, is a great way to learn more. And, of course, they have activities taking place all the way from November through March. That hunt ball scheduled to finish out the current season March 6th through 10th of 2024. Can we give them one more send-off as they circle back to make their exit from our opening ceremonies here as our... Hunter Spectacular of Palm Beach is getting closer and closer to a start. Salute once again to uh, Mrs. Jennifer Brown, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Scott Traphagen, and Mrs. Patty Traphagen, Dina McCombs, also uh, Ms. Carol Ann Marty, and Ms. Annabelle Nicole, Ms. Taylor Quick, and of course, Master and Huntsman of the Palm Beach Hounds, Mr. Adam Brown, for being with us here on Saturday. And of course, those great hounds, 20 couple or 40 hounds joining us as well to give you an accurate representation of the feel of the fox hunt. Once again, at this point, just about 10 minutes out from the top of the order, we will be seeing our first horse coming in here 6.30 tonight. And we should let you know that there are three separate sections and heights that will be taking place. We will be uh, starting off with 28 entries showing in the first group of the evening. Then we'll adjust those heights for uh, five to go in that second group, two showing in the highest group of competitors. 
Three six, three nine, and four foot, the heights of our competition this evening. And we have a 35 horse field. And from that field, of course, top 12 will be coming back. We've told you about some of our sponsors earlier on Parlanti, CWD Cellier, as well as Neutrina and Essex Classics. We would also like to inform you about the Grayson Jockey Club Research Foundation, who fund equine research to let horses of all breeds live healthier lives. They offer several programs that allow you to contribute to equine research in your own unique way and to support the health of horses for years to come. We're glad to support Grayson Jockey Club Research Foundation, a supporting sponsor as well of the USHJA Young Horse Championship. So they return the favor as well. Yeah, tonight we have uh, 35 entries competing for $100,000. Yeah, the horses will jump the same height as the section from which they qualified. We'll see three six horses first. Yeah, fence heights will then be raised to 3-9 for the second year green and regular confirmation horses. And yeah, finishing up, fences will be raised to four foot for the high performance working hunter horses. Now the round will be scored by three teams of two judges each. Each team will give one score, and then the three scores are averaged for a final score. The top 12 scoring entries will return for a second round, each round counting 50%, so the average scores from the two rounds will be added together and then averaged it to determine the overall final score. The entry with the highest average score will be the WCHR Palm Beach Hunter Spectacular winner and take home $30,000 the Dark Continent Perpetual Trophy, courtesy of Jim Green, and a custom WCHR jacket and a cooler. Our winning rider will also receive the Let's Dance Perpetual Trophy, donated by our late friend, Gene Armish. And Gene Mish himself, a uh, visionary that helped to pull together the original Winter Equestrian Festival back in the uh, late 60s and early 70s. And ever since, this has truly become the equestrian capital of North America, if not the world. In fact, riders coming from all over the world to compete in uh, several different events throughout each and every winter. And of course, the circuit has grown now to a 12-week series of events right here in the Midway Point. We are so proud to uh, put the Hunters, based on style and grace, on center stage for your enjoyment here on Saturday night. And of course, we do have expert judges with us who will be making up the three panels that Jason Porter just mentioned to you. They'll be located in three different areas of the arena, so they have their own vantage points. The judges will include panel one, which is on the Central Park side of the arena, just a bit closer to the in gate on the bank there. Panel one made up of Ms. Mary Euphemia and Mr. Mark Young here. By the way, they will be the tiebreaker for the first round if necessary while we determine who will be among our top 12 to return. Panel two will be made up of Mr. Chris Wynn and Mr. Shane George, also located on the Central Park side of the arena, a little further away from the in gate. And then, of course, in front of the International Club, we have the panel made up of Ms. Mary Lisa Leffler and Ms. Wendy Peralta, and they will round out the crew of judges. So six total judges, but they are paired up so that each pair will give a numerical score, and the combined result all of those three numerical scores will be an average for round one. Andy Christensen, of course, is our designer of the route here for the evening. And the first round competition, as you can see here, will be fences one through 12. If you do have one of our orders of go on the reverse side of that, they will begin over the driftwood and grass vertical and come away from home here, uh, going toward home rather, and then jump the birch tree vertical down close to the in-gate area of the ring, away from home to the Birch Tree Oxer, which is headed toward the announcer stand before they roll back to uh, jump the wagon wheel vertical with the grass rail going back toward home. Across the arena, there is an Oxer heading toward the International Club, and another Oxer just in front of that International Club that will be fences five and six, respectively. Away from home, the vertical with the uh, stone columns will be fence number seven, number eight is the stone house oxer and then they'll go across the fence at the top end of the arena with the big wagon wheel wings as number nine 10 and 11 is the white combination with brick 
uh, walls. And then down toward home is fence number 12 to finish out that first round. They'll uh, be judging again all the way through the uh, course here tonight. And we'll be seeing the top of the order coming up here in just a few minutes. At this point, we are five minutes away, in fact, from the first of 28 entries to show in that three foot six section. As Jason mentioned, we'll adjust to three foot nine for five entries and then have just two entries at the highest of heights tonight at the four foot group. So that's how we'll uh, be working our way through this. And of course, the return order will be reverse order of preference from the first round. We've given you the basics of scoring and the basics of the route that will be used here this evening. And of course, as we get closer and closer to the top of the order here in the class, we also have Andrew Ellis there at the back gate. He'll be joining us to make sure that things keep moving along and sending horses in in their proper order and at their proper time. But before we do have that first one come into the arena, it's my pleasure to present to you our featured vocalist for the evening. As is customary here in the United States, we like to to take a moment before the start of any major event to pay tribute to our country and to do that this evening representative of the United States Hunter Jumper Association and here to perform our national anthem we have Ms. Gwendolyn Hag as our performer so as she does join us we would ask all of you to please rise and remove cover as we honor our United States of America with our national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Gwendolyn Hag with an incredible rendition of our national anthem, again in tribute to our United States of America. We salute her and of course this country and all of you who have joined us to honor these top level horses this evening. You're going to see some great performances and again it's all based on style and grace. The ability to overcome all of the 12 obstacles that are numbered there with that style and grace and proper pace as well that would be required if you were out on the fox hunting field but of course in a heightened level of style here in the show hunter sport. First of the order should be coming up here in just a moment. And by the way, I also want to mention to you that while this is our feature event under the lights here for the week, we do have one more day of competition that will be taking place tomorrow morning. If you would like to be here for the Peggy Cohn Classic, that will be happening all day long here in the International Arena. But for right now, we'll welcome in the top of the order for the evening, and that Absolutely. will be Frosted and Jennifer Hannon riding for Rindy Dominguez, number 1195 for the judges' scorecards. This is a a 10-year-old Holsteiner mouth by a sire Gosh, named Connor. Uh, Rindy Dominguez, the owner out know, of Barrington, Rhode Island. This, Jennifer Hannon rides out of Wakefield, Rhode Island. And is a trainer there at Ocean Echo Farm. Earned rider, her right to be a part of this out of the 3-6 so Green go with Division Celeste. Championship. And of course, she's also yes. had numerous champion and international yes. derby wins throughout the course of her career. She's the first of 28 to show at the three foot six height. Again, we welcome Frosted and Jennifer Hannon. Professional and amateur. And I think Kate is the girl for the job tonight. Well, our first rider up, it is Frosted, uh, the uh, ride for Jennifer Hammond, Hannon of Wakefield, Rhode Island. She rides out of her Ocean Echo Farm. Frosted is a 10-year-old uh, Holsteiner by Connor, owned by Rindy Dominguez out of Barrington, Rhode Island. They've had numerous championships, derby wins, 
the uh, circuit champion in the green 3-3 last year, top two finisher in the incentive finals and champion at Capital Challenge last year. Frosted, Jen Hannon show the way and they qualified for tonight's class out of the green 3-6. All of our riders qualified to get in here by virtue of their performance this week or by earning a buy by winning one of the major competitions, either a Hunter Spectacular uh, in either the Midwest or the West Coast or by virtue of their performance in the World Champion Hunter Rider divisions last year. So I think it's important we talk about this horse being a stallion, right? Yes. I mean, you would never know he was a stallion. He's very well behaved, um, has a great temperament, super flashy who has a lot of bling and Jen obviously does a beautiful job with this horse I've watched him go a couple of times and have always been very impressed with him he has such a nice way of going such a nice expression and again everybody watching we're watching you know we're seeing it at a di different angle than the people that are watching live you guys are seeing the same thing we're seeing so there are things that happen on course that we don't always see. This is a young horse. It's nighttime. He's getting a little green in between the jumps, not so much the jumps, um, which there's nothing wrong with that at this state of his career. Jen told me that this horse she got two years ago, and he was actually in the Ukraine at the start of the war and ended up fleeing the country with the rest of his stable mates to Belgium, and that's where she got him. And he was doing some bigger jumpers, so she still has sometimes a hard time to control his canter and his jump as a hunter as smoothly as we'd like him to. But what a great experience for him as a first-year horse. You know, Super. chances are he'll be back here next year, another year of, you know, time and training and ring time next year and all this greenness will probably be, dis be gone and he'll be the champion. For sure it's a very difficult venue to bring a first year horse into under the lights with the crowd. You don't really think about the crowd in a hunter class but this night is always very well attended and it's definitely a bigger atmosphere for the horses. Jen Hannon and Frosted, the uh, scores coming in from them. Our panel of judges, panel one, Mark Young here and Mary Euphemia are sitting in front of the gallery location. Panel number two, Chris Wynn and Shane George sit in front of Central Park location. And on the International Club side, it's Mary Lisa Leffler and Wendy Peralta, panel number three. The score is coming in. They are 82 from panel one, 83 and 86 for an 83-66 average score. 83-66. For our first in. We'll go to the uh, second of our riders. Here's Parker Peacock. Parker is uh, qualified out of the uh, younger small junior division. She's on a claim, a 12-year-old Oldenburg gelding by Heartbreaker out of Kalanda Z. She hails from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, rides with Tori Colvin, a six-time winner of this class. Is reserve champion in the younger three six small juniors here. I don't know um, Parker very well myself other than saying hi to her, but she's a very lovely girl. She's always very friendly. Obviously got a lot of talent. Um, you know, she's riding with Tori, who is, you know, one of the best hunter riders ever. So I'm sure they have this horse, and I'm sure she's prepared to do a great job tonight. I think Tori's brought this horse along as from a first-year horse for Parker, and Parker started riding him fairly early on. Uh, he did compete in this class last year with Parker, and they had a very solid performance last year. Maybe you can tell the difference between this horse and the first horse with Jen. He's not as nervous, not as playful, probably because he did this last year under the lights at the nighttime. I'm sorry, in the nighttime. Now, one thing interesting about this class also is the professionals compete against the juniors and the amateurs, so it's the best of the best. Of Absolutely, the yeah. It's a really special class to be a part of. This horse is like a super steady Eddie, as I would say. It does. It checks all the boxes. She rides beautiful. Really nice round. We 
cheers from the crowd for Acclaim and Parker Peacock as uh, they wrap up their efforts. No stranger to tough competitions. They were second in both the challenge, the capital challenge, and at the uh, at Harrisburg for the uh, overall championship uh, section, the class at the end of the uh, junior hunter divisions. Uh, Parker scores 87, 88, and 84. It's an 86, 33. Three. I think that's totally on spot. Yes. And we'll go to a rider who had a stellar year last year earning her a buy into this uh, by virtue of her performance at Capital Challenge last year. Here's Ariana Marnell and her ride for the uh, class tonight. The first of her rides is Belou's Lady from Rafferty Farms, 11-year-old mare by Belou de Muse. Trains with John French out of Kent Farrington's uh, stables. They qualified, uh, they showed the three, six older junior hunters. Best child rider at Harrisburg, Capital Challenge. Devon and the Hampton Classic, part of uh, her many accolades. Gosh, I don't know this girl at all, but obviously she, she is a very good rider, and she has a beautiful resume, and she and John have a great connection and finding great horses. And I know we all love Babylon, and her successes were well-deserved, as well as John's successes with that horse. Ariana has such a nice feel. She's so soft with the horses, and I think that's why she was able to get along with Babylon so well when he was so young and still a little bit green. Yep. You watch this horse, so the first horse of the class may be the only one that will come in with a Pelham, and I personally don't have a problem with hunters needing Pelhams if that's what they need, and it's a very soft ride like you're saying. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I agree with you on that. Uh, John and Ariana were telling me this horse was doing meter 50 at the end of last year and uh, they bought her as an equitation and derby prospect for Ariana since she's moved on from Babylon and her other great hunter Ocean Road and they put her in some junior hunter classes just to try to get some more experience from the Washington hunter phase and all that stuff and she just really shined this week so they were kind of excited that she maybe could also do some hunter stuff along with the derbies and be a great equitation horse. Yeah, she's absolutely lovely. I think we all know when you have a good mare, a great mare, you've got a great mare. That's for sure. All these horses prior to the class uh, were jogged for soundness and uh, vet inspection prior to the start of the class. Ariana Marnell wraps up her efforts here on Palou's Lady. As we said, the judges are placed on three different locations. Two panels of judges are on the opposite side of the ring from the International Club, judges one and two. Judge one closer to the end gate, judge two. They're both, both on the uh, 40 yard line if say if you were looking at the football field in the dead center on the far side of the uh, ring the international club side is panel three ariana will score 80 81 and 82 and that will be an 81 average for our third rider out now here is the current reigning world champion hunter rider kate conover here we go rides. it's damas de tenere the 11 year old french red gelding by scarface de mar Owned by Autumn Janeski out of Brewster, New York. Trained by Alex Hammer and Buxton Farm. I guarantee Kate's not going to take any prisoners. She's going to go for it. Good, bad, and different. She always rides so forward. So forward. Absolutely. So positive, right? Confident. Like, even if the horse isn't confident, she never wavers in how she presents a horse or rides it around the course. Kate is a big Philadelphia Eagles fan on her bio. <laughs> it says, fly Eagles fly. That was her one comment. So. 
Well, maybe she'll fly to the winner's circle tonight. And just such a lovely girl. Super fun. I don't know much about this horse, but it's lovely. Like, it, as far as I can tell, Haven's like, it's jumping every jump the same. It's got a great expression. I think this horse won the handy in the second air with Kate this week. Okay. Scoring a 92. It also does 3 3 amateur with its owner. He just look, he looks like a fun horse to ride. He just, you know, dials in on the jumps and just stays in the box and jumps every jump in the same style. It's lovely. Kate Conover and Damas de Tener finishing up their efforts here. Our reigning world champion, Hunter Ryder. I don't know. I don't know if that's my favorite so far or not. Score to beat is an 86-3-3. If you just See joined us, say. panel of judges, uh, panel one, Mark Young here and Mary Euphemia. Chris Wynn and Shane George are panel two. Mary Lisa Leffler and Wendy Peralta are panel three. If you want to follow along, see the scores as they come in, you can go to equestrianlive.com, follow the scoring there, or on Showgrounds Live, you can uh, go there uh, or through the uh, wellingtoninternationals.com website. And uh, again, follow along with the scoring. You can see it coming in as uh, the judges uh, input their scores. 86, 87, 85, that is an 86 average. We'll go into fourth place. Right now, we're into second, second place, place, right by second Parker place. Peacock yep. and Acclaim. Okay. Holly Orlando is uh, next in. Qualified here with McAllen out of the uh, Green 36 of Privet Farm LLC entry. McAllen, a nine year old Dutch bred gelding by Typhoon S out of Decibel S. Prevent Farm out of Rye, New York. Holly, based here in Wellington, Florida. The trainer is Jenny Dunyon, Evermore Incorporated. Numerous champions in 3-3 greens last season. Champion here in the 3-6 uh, greens the second week of WEF and reserve champion this week in Section A of the 3-6 greens. I think it's safe to say that we all admire Holly for her riding skills and her professionalism and you know, always being a cheerleader, a joy to be around. She just loves showing and competing. They were telling me that this little horse came from Brian Walker, who is from Canada that spent a lot of time in the U.S. and now lives, I believe he lives in Holland now. Again, so a little greenness. Obviously, he's a first-year horse, if you guys all remember as Oliver was introducing this horse. So this happens with the younger horses. Sometimes it happens with the older horses. Well, it's quite a different atmosphere. Yep. Plus, I mean, you know, we're now sitting here. It is uh, just about 645. And the horse's time, they're saying it's uh, my time. I should be in my stall. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. She handled it well. Didn't feel the need, to, wasn't ready to go the next jump. Take a deep breath and just continue and do it for the experience. We've all been there. Yes, we have. It's definitely a hard class for first year green horses. And there you go. Like, that's a true professional. You pat the horse on the neck, withdraw from the round, and that's just how we do it there's no reason to get upset with the horse it's the circumstances it's not the horse and next year he'll probably be back in the class and potential winner i know when you qualify out of the first year you're always questioning do i do the class do i not do the class as competitors and riders we always want to do it yeah but a lot of times when you're on a first year horse this many times why i haven't done it is because you're thinking about the horse and the future of the horse, and it's just a very big atmosphere for the six week, sixth week of them doing first year green. Yep. Chris Payne qualified two tonight, uh, and we'll see uh, him up first here on Can Can, the uh, 
14 year old Italian bred mare by Castari della Cascia, owned by Stephanie Ring. Chris Payne qualified out of the performance three foot six division. I think that's actually a misprint. I think he's a gelding. Yes, definitely. He identifies as a gelding. <laughs> All, all I know is I'm glad you have to pronounce all these, all these names, right? And I, <laughs> I mean, I've seen this horse go. I think he's super amazing. You know, Chris and Dave do an incredible job with their business. The horse has always turned out beautiful. Their tack room is always beautiful. Everything's always beautiful. Andy Christensen with the duties designing the tracks, the uh, 2022 course designer of the year for the WCHR program. This horse came from Elon Furter and he's a little bit of a smaller horse in stature. And Dave Belford told me that when they went to try this horse, they went to try it for an adult amateur hunter. They were looking for an adult amateur. He said, Havens, I saw the horse jump two jumps. I got on the phone. I told Chris, get over here right now. And this horse is just an ex exceptional jumper. Yes, absolutely. Checks all the boxes and then some. Had a step or two late there. A little change. bit. And again, you know, some judges, judges might be able to see that and some might not be able to see that. As you see uh, here on the uh, ring, the two big gazebos. So, you know, it, it does affect at some point, some jump. One of the judges may not see it as yeah, well absolutely. as the others do. You could miss a swap. You could not hear a rub. Absolutely. So when you hear a difference in the scores, it's just from the different vantage point yep. that each of our panels of judges is sitting at. a little little bit of sassiness with his mouth so to speak and Chris is covering it up beautifully and but still a beautiful horse going around the ring Andy and his team have done an amazing job decorating this course tonight it looks really pretty there's over 500 ferns out there. He That's said I could have oh, used really? another 200. Oh, my goodness. Just well, kudos to them. Pretty job. Oh, we'll see the scores coming in here for Chris Payne. Based outside of Cincinnati, Ohio, on Can Can, he had 83.80, for an 82.5 aboard Stephanie Ring's Can Can. Vivian Yowen qualified out of the Performance 36 division on the Partridge Hill Equestrian LLC's 10-year-old uh, uh, Royal Dutch Warm Blood Gelding, knowingly by Casero out of Zamira. was the uh, 2022 developing professional. Vivian uh, as uh, well as uh, champion performance uh, three six at Capital Challenge, winner of the Derby Down Perpetual Trophy for the high score in the professional division. Reserve champion at the uh, small juniors uh, at Devon with uh, this horse and champion and grand champion at the uh, national horse uh, again. Knowingly, the nine-year-old, owned by Partridge Hill, ridden by Vivian Yowen, who's also the trainer out of her Saddle Ridge. 
I don't know about you, Havens, but I always try to think to myself, like, who, who's, who's going to replace us in this world, right? The younger professionals and, you know, who's going to be able to have the longevity and the, the strength and the heart and the work of ethic, whatever you want to call it to make it in this world. And I definitely think she is one of those girls. Yeah, I agree with you. She came up through the pony and junior ranks with Tim and Kelly Gogan at Boggs Hill and they're hard workers and instill yep. that in their students. Um, and yeah. she was with Val for a while, right, also? I think she went to work for Val. She w- uh, went to Red at Heritage a little bit, I think, at, after Tim and Kelly for a minute, while she was in college, maybe. Um, she's just been with some really top programs. Yep. Taken her brought along correctly. Taken her time to come to be a professional, and, and she's a beautiful rider. This horse came from Larry Glefke and Kelly Farmer, and... Uh, we lost Larry last year. Great horseman gone. Yep. Oh, well, maybe he's here with her tonight, right? I'm She's sure he's. Nailing it. I'm sure he's here with every one of his horses that he ever picked. He believed in every single one of them. It's a very pretty horse. Very typey. I don't know. I feel like I'm a stickler about where the ears are when they're going around and the it's headset very imp- the and the shape. It just make it doesn't have to be the best jumper, the best mover, but the presentation and the horses have to be interested. It has to look like it jumps. enjoys its job. Yeah, yeah exactly. But like be interested in it, like let's go, let's go, let's get to the next jump. And that this horse definitely does that. That was a beautiful ride. We did, Sandy. I know. (laughs) (laughs) I remember it well. I still have a lot of years on you. (laughs) Well, the score is for Vivian 86 5, 89 81 for an 85.5, 85 5. And right now that goes into third place. The youngest rider showing tonight here, uh, one of our youngest riders, is JJ Toronto. He qualified out of the younger large junior section. He's riding the Islu Incorporated Entry Lascano. So his father's uh, mount, third at Derby Finals last year. The 12 year old was failing gelding by Los Angeles out of Lascaja. JJ was reserve champion at the Pony Medal Finals and the Washington Pony Medal Finals also. Grand Pony champion at Harrisburg. Moves up uh, to the juniors last season as well. And the horse was the horse of the year, Green Hunter in 2021. Third in Derby Finals, multiple Derby wins, including this year. Winner of the Derby Premier Week with uh, his father, Jimmy, aboard. Okay, there's no denying that he's Jimmy's son. <laughs> I mean, it is absolutely little Jimmy. He when- rides beautifully, and just like his dad, who was a, you know, a super great rider. I have to say, when I see him riding, I also see his mom. So much finesse that his the mom has. And, and uh, yeah. And what a great horse. Daryl's been a great supporter of the industry for years, years and, years and years and years. Great family. Great family. I don't have kids, and I never really thought that was something I wanted to do until I see and hear Jimmy talk about JJ. Liza Tal Boyd talk about her girls, right. and then I'm like, oh, I should have done that. But I think so par- we got parenting. We got change there, right? Sorry to interrupt you. Parenting is probably one of the hardest jobs ever. Sorry, but to go back, I think he didn't landed left, went right, and had to come back left yeah. there after that end jump. And in this class, that's going to be a deduction for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean that. I don't like to use the word penalty, but it will definitely be a deduction. Beautiful ride. He's young, right? I mean, he's got lots of years I left. I think JJ's uh, like 12. He's still, I think he can still left. ride small ponies. Oh, my goodness. That's so funny. I think, uh, I think he, he wants to be out of the pony ring. He was showing some jumpers. He's been doing some jumpers this year. Uh, moved up to the 
meter 20 jumpers, uh, junior jumpers this year? We talk about the history of this class. Um, Clara Lindner won this class on high hearts, and I do believe she was 12 years old when she won it. Um, I was working for the Linders and Tom Wright at that that year, and that was that was an amazing night to think that a little 12 year old could just flop the reins and go in there and gallop the course. Chestnut mare, right? Chestnut mare. There you go. 77, <laughs> 84, and 85 and a half. Great mare. <laughs> The uh, scores are 82-1-6 for JJ right now going into sixth place. John Ingram joined us, qualified out of the uh, older section of our 3-6 amateurs. He's on uh, the aged gelding Romeo from John and Stephanie Ingram, LLC, out of Nashville, Tennessee. Tom Wright, the trainer, qualified out of uh, the 3-6 olders from Nashville, head of his family's company, Ingram Industries. In addition to being the creator and backbone of the Nashville Soccer Club, true amateur John splits his time between work, soccer, and his equestrian activities. And Romeo is currently leading the Wellington Circuit standings in the older 3-6 amateur section. I mean, what do you say about John Ingram? It's just another great owner, <laughs> another great family that's been supporting this industry and the polo industry and the eventing industry. Just everything. For so many years. I think he's such an incredibly soft rider. He is. He is. And he loves his horses. He'll always do what's right by them. I mean, his, their relationship with Tom Wright, I mean, I don't even know how many years they've been together. You probably know because yeah. you're a lot younger than me. Well, I, I don't I think I'm that much younger. <laughs> the one thing about John is no matter what happens. He's happy. He's smiling when yeah, he walks that's out. What I'm yeah, that's saying. Yeah. yeah. Tom Wright was saying this horse is one in a million. And I think this horse was imported by Aaron Duffy out in California. And he ended up going to uh, Dave Belford and Chris Payne at New Hope for one of their clients. And then when he came available, Tom snatched him up. And they can't say enough good things about this horse. Well, obviously we all know Tom knows what he's doing, so. One thing John told me is he broke his collarbone at Middleburg Classic two years ago mm -hmm. and um, offered Martha the ride on the horse, and she went right in at Capital Challenge and won every 3-6 amateur class. Just a classy horse. Nice round. The whole package is a class act. Well, John Ingram finishing up on Romeo. Again, the ears, the, the, it's just so beautiful. Scores coming in as uh, our three panels of judges. Again, we have uh, Mark Younger and Mary Euphemia, panel one. Chris uh, Wynn and Shane George are panel two. They are on the gallery and Central Park side of the arena. And panel three, Mary Lisa Leffler and Wendy Peralta sit on the International Club side of the ring. Waiting on one score to come in. Seventy-two, eighty-five, and seventy-three. A seventy-six, six-six for John and Romeo. Seventy-six, six-six, and here is Sophie Gotchman, qualified out of the younger amateur division. Sophie is a bullard Coulter. Eight-year-old Hanoverian gelding by Franciscus out of Sophie. Trained by Ken Berkeley and Scott Seward out of River's Edge. Junior uh, amateur classic winner at the uh, Hampton Classic with Coulter, classic winner at Upperville. And was the uh, $25,000 high junior amateur classic winner at the Hampton Classic as a rider. Grand champion at Upperville with Coulter and was the USCF medium amateur champion as a uh, jumper rider. And that was the 2019 North American Young Rider champion. Versatile rider here, Sophie Gotchman on the eight-year-old Coulter.
I'm going to backtrack for a second. Havens to John's round. Yes. Because either I missed something. I thought the scores in the 70s were a little bit low. I did too. So, again, you guys, up here in the live feed, we can't hear rubs. We can't sometimes see things. So, just so you know. What you see on the screen is what we see. Yep. And as we always said, all three panels of judges are looking at different angles, have different things that might be uh, blocking yeah, the view. Absolutely. Of one fence or another. I mean, talk about the Gotchens, another great family that have supported the horse world for so many years. And with Scott Stewart, and Peter Pletcher, and brought along so many great horses. And whether it's Becky, Mimi. Becky and Mimi still doing the hunters. Or Becky Sophie. and Sophie yeah, still yeah. doing the hunters. Yeah. Mimi I mean, mainly just, moved on. It doesn't on, matter what on the to family. The, uh, <laughs> They're upper level <laughs> jumpers right yeah. now. <laughs> They're so good at what they yeah. do. Sophie, a full time student at Harvard. Yeah, Sophie took a little break from riding, and it's nice to see her back. Yep. I was judging her earlier today in the. Uh, jumper ring in the medium amateurs. Really nice ride. Oh, we have seen 10 of 28 of the uh, Three foot six height. We'll see five at three nine and two at the four foot height. Scores are in there. 76, 82 from panel two, a 73 and a half from panel three, and that is a 77.16. 77. Point one six for Sophie Gotchman and Coulter. Now here is uh, Christian Dominguez, qualified out of the older large juniors. He's on the Elan Farms Flawless. Eight-year-old Zangerscheid uh, bred uh, entry by Vagrin Z out of, uh, I won't even try and pronounce the damn's name. Owned by the Elan Farms out of Newark, New Jersey. Christian Dominguez of Barrington, Rhode Island. Trains with Jen Hannon out of her Ocean Echo Farm. Horse was third in the Princeton Hunter Derby. It's second in the uh, WCHR Challenge last year. And uh, Christian says highlight of his current show year, tonight's Hunter Spectacular. I do not know Christian at all, except I know he wins a lot. And... You know, Jen Hannah has such a beautiful business and great professional, so it makes sense to me. Is that his mom that owns so Frosted? So it is his mom that owns okay. Frosted. I was just going to say that would be an interesting fact to see who has the most horses qualified for the class tonight. I believe some of his horses are leased, so they are not in the ownership of their family, but to have three horses qualified for the class, it's pretty, it's pretty spectacular. Yeah. Well, we are at the Hunter Spectacular. Yes, we are. This horse, uh, Jen told me, also uh, the same as Ariana's horse. When they first spotted this horse, they thought of this horse for uh, equitation horse and got it home and thought, hmm, maybe we should try some hunters with it. And I think he's done the hunters and the international derbies with it and done quite well last year. Christian and Flawless uh, making their way here around the course. High score in 86-3-3 right now. Still a claim and Parker Peacock leading the way.
Oh gosh, I've never seen him go around the ring, but I thought that was really, really nice. Very smooth. Of course, looks super relaxed. He is a very smooth rider. I happened to walk in to the National Horse Show when he was doing his round in the McClay Finals, and he went quite early, and he just laid it right down. Scores coming in for Christian are 82 and a half, a 77 and a 70. It's a 76.5 average score for Christian Dominguez in our older large junior qualifier here with Flawless. Hallie Robinson rides the stable assets entry uh, out of uh, California. Here's Leisure. Nine-year-old Hanoverian mare by out of uh, Quanta Costa. Stable assets located in Venice, California. Hallie hail, hails from Santa Barbara and rides out of her Hunt Ridge uh, farm. The developing pro challenge winner in 2023, earning her her buy into the uh, competition. She was the WCHR national champion developing pro last year and the winner of the uh, developing pro challenge at uh, the Capital Challenge last season. USET finals uh, winner in 2017 and the owner and trainer of Hunt Ridge out of uh, Santa Barbara, California. I think Haley is a lot like we talked about Vivian, yes. someone who's going to carry the flag for all of us. Yep, make um, us proud. I don't know her very well. She's from California. I don't know what her early years were, but she came to show in Kentucky last year, and she was very professional, very outgoing, takes beautiful care of her horses. This is another first-year horse. This horse actually, uh, Man Destige rode as a young horse, and Bill Ellis, another great horseman that yeah. we lost last year, um, found this horse for one of his clients, and Amanda started it. And I think Haley bought it at the beginning of last summer and brought it along. And I don't know, because I know you were talking that, so this horse swapped its leads, uh, swapped lead lead a couple strides before the first jump so for the you guys watching that is a major deduction yes should be a major deduction but again a green horse but again she's never losing her composure never get not getting after a horse just kind of kept going that's what you gotta do you just gotta keep going I do think that gray line that is coming right towards the camera, uh, I do believe a few horses ago, there were a few people that did nine strides in that line. Uh, and when you walk it, it is a up in eight strides or very, very slow nine strides. And it seems to me like maybe the judges are looking for the eight a little bit more with the scores that have been given for the few horses that did nine a few rounds ago. Yeah. And I, but I was also wondering, um, the flawless horse with Christian, he was a little late of the eight. Watching it head on, you could see him kind of have to dig yep. in for the last two yep. strides. So I was wondering, that's maybe that's why the two lower scores. Yeah, he she got, got up there. Easy. Nice, yeah. yeah. Really cute horse. Haley Robinson. Did work for a while with Holly Hill and also uh, worked for Chris and Dave. For oh, a while. really? Yeah, for for uh, Chris Payne and Dave Belfort before uh, setting up shop out in the West Coast. Oh, her score is Leisure and Haley's score is 74, a 70, and an 82 and a half from panel three over on the International Club side of the ring. That's a 75.5, 75.5 average. And now here is Babylon and John French. Yeah. Eight-year-old Oldenburg gelding by Crumbie out of DeSera. Marnell Sport Horses, the owners out of Las Vegas, Nevada. John, the rider, and trains with John out of Kent Farrington Stables. Uh, leased this year by Paige Walkenbeck out of Paradise Valley, Arizona. This combination, three years in a row, won the Pro Challenge. 
capital challenge. And probably this class and that class are the two hardest classes to win, wouldn't you say? I would say. I mean, for different reasons. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. One, this is where the elements of being outside in the big arena late at night in the dark. And then, of course, you know, the pro challenge, you got to switch the horses and do all that other stuff. John was the USCF National Discipline Rider of the Year this year. Horse Paradigm, which we'll see later on tonight, was the Horse of the Year. And what is this horse, just nine now? Nine I think this horse is nine eight, years old. Eight years old eight. now. So, I mean, he's still a baby, really, to, yeah. to have won all that he's won. Yeah, I mean, amazing horse. Grand champion, junior at Capital Challenge, three years in a row. Grand Junior Hunter champion, all four indoor, sh indoor shows with Ariana. John shows him sparingly. I think he's been out once with John on it this year, I think, in the performance. And it did no classes because John had a bye by virtue of winning the pro yeah. challenge. So he had a bye to come into the night Correct. anyway. Mm -hmm. So He's just a good horse. He is. He yeah, looked to be maybe just a little starstruck at the beginning. I've got a swap there out of the two, so that's, that's, that's a deduction. Mm -hmm. But even with the mistake, it's a great horse. Great horse. Nobody can de deny them as being a winning combination. Well, that was my pick. You know, it is one of the best combinations, combinations for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> of the last 20 years. Yeah, I mean, just stuff happens. Yeah. Well, it's up to Paradigm now. Oh, so you're betting on the rider, not the horse. Well, no, I'm just saying, for, <laughs> for John, it's up to Paradigm. I mean, we're He's betting a lot of money, Oliver. Ride. You can't change the bet yeah. now. No, 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 I'm, st I'm staying with the horse I pick here. I'm staying with the horse I pick. We'll see what the judges think here, you know. Well, the judges liked it. 88, 84 wow. and a half, 85, 75. That is an 86, 08. John will go into second. So I am still in the hunt. Uh -oh. You still in the hunt. <laughs> And you know what? Kudos for them for giving us that combination a great score. A young lady who had a big score earlier today with a 90 in the uh, younger amateur on our hunters. Here's Melissa Jacobs out of uh, Buffalo, New York area on Melissa Jacobs LLC's chaplain. A, a nine-year-old Holsteiner Gelding. She rides and trains with uh, Dave Belford and Chris Payne. Graduate of Georgetown University. Really super young lady. She, uh, when she was at school, we had a couple of her horses at our farm so she could keep riding. Again, talk about the family. Another great family. <laughs> nice girl. Dave and Chris do a great job. This is a new horse for her. I think this may be third or fourth horse show for them together. Super. Chris showed this horse as a first-year horse, and then he got an injury. He put his leg through the stall door, so he's had some time off, but he's coming back. He should be a perfect match for her. So far, he is. This is another horse who has just a great expression. I just, we're also blessed to have these families that have just two or three generations of people that have supported this, the horse industry, the show jumping industry, and there'll be more kids and grandkids that'll ride. So thank you to all of those families for doing this, all that you do. So again, a little bobble there. But even as an amateur, she did not lose her composure. She didn't panic, just, no. just keep going. Happy 
is too bad. Such a pretty horse. Oh, the scores from Melissa and Chaplin are coming in. One more score to arrive here, and then we will let you know what the judges thought. High score came from McLean. And right now we have 68, 6, 7, and 6, 9 from Chaplin and Melissa for a 68 average score. Well, the high score again, Acclaim and Parker Peacock, Babylon and John French in second, Damas de Tener and Kate Conover round out the top three, followed by Vivian Yao and Jen Hannon and Chris Payne. And the top 12, the cutoff to make the second round is a 75 and a half. Adriana Forte is in on Shakira, a 14-year-old warm blood mare. Owned by First Blue LLC of Blue Point, New York. A rider from Watermill, New York. Trains with Jenna Weinford at First Blue LLC. Competes in the uh, older small juniors to win her way into tonight's class. The winner of the 3-3 WCHR class here last year on uh, WCHR week. And the class winner in the 3-3 juniors at Junior Hunter Finals. Reserve champion 15-year-old equitation. The Capital Challenge. And this combination, multiple champions in the 3-3 three, three, and 3-6 three, junior hunters. This is a pair I really don't know anything about. I don't spend a lot of time at the junior hunter ring. The one thing I do know about this girl is she went first in the medal finals last year, and she nailed it. She went right in there and rode the course beautifully. Well, then this course should be a piece of cake. She has, looks like she has a lot of confidence, a lot of scope. Take a look back at uh, some of the highlights of her round. see a lot more mares around the horse show these days than we did at some point. Adriana Forte scores 79, 83 and a half and 83 for an 81, 83, 81, 83. And that would put them into eighth place right now. The cutoff for the second round is a 76 and a half from Christian Dominguez. Here's another one of the ones to watch. Uh, they were the winners of the Midwest Spectacular out at Traverse City last summer. Champions uh, throughout the uh, indoor season last uh, year. Here's Jeffrey Hesslink and the uh, Meridian Farms drum roll. They earned a bye coming into the night from that Midwest Spectacular win. The 10-year-old uh, Holsteiner Gelding by Diamant de Semely out of a Comp C. Jeffrey, uh, past winner of the U.S. Uh, EF Talent Search Finals, uh, reserve champion at Derby Finals last year, grand champion at Harrisburg with uh, drum roll, and a grand green champion at Capital Challenge, and was the uh, champion green 3-9 at the National. Champion at Devon with uh, Kelly Mullen before the uh, sale to Meridian Farms last year. So again, no denying, it's a great combination. 
you know, Kelly's a good friend of mine, and you know she brought this horse along. Actually, Kelly shot. Kelly before shot that, had right? it right? before I that. Seeing that horse, yes. I thought it was so nice. So kudos to everybody who's been a part of this horse's development, for Jeffrey and Brendan for continuing his growth and success. I think the horse showed in the amateurs and did well with Caroline this week too. I know he yeah, won I, the I classes think, the first one, day. Was he champion? Classes, I think he won classes today. Um, Fabulous. So he must have been champion. Where won classes yesterday? I, uh, it was the highest scoring round I think uh, with a 92 um, from the younger amateurs. So that's nice to see her doing well yes. on him. Yeah. She does the three six with him. She does do the three six with him. Yes. So she prepped him for her trainer. <laughs> she did. Way to go. <laughs> so it'll be interesting. I don't know if I'd really want to judge this class. Yeah. It's a lot of great horse and rider combinations. One day, you and Havies, you and me, Havies, we'll be out here judging. Scores, I don't know about that. Scores <laughs> coming in. Yes, we will. Again, different ven venues around the ring. Uh, 70, 81 and a half, and 84.25. 78.58, the uh, score. 7858 for a drum roll. And Jeffrey Hessling. So maybe we missed something. I don't know. Yeah, the horse just looked a little starstruck to me. It looked like Jeffrey felt like he needed to ride him up to all the jumps and control More him a little more than, than they normally are. Now we'll have uh, Primrose, and uh, one of our young riders here, showing out of uh, the younger large junior section. It's Catherine Mercer on the Frog Pond Stables Primrose, a nine year old mare. Westphalian by Baloo Bellini out of Ferrara. Based here in Wellington, Florida. Trains with Savannah Talcott and uh, Ali Sweetnam. Catherine uh, is a straight A seventh grade student at American Heritage School. In addition to riding, she plays the piano, enjoys tennis, and they have won multiple championships and reserves uh, together throughout uh, 23 and 24. Gosh, I think I saw this mare a couple of years ago as a free Aww, green horse. Too bad. So unfortunate. Um, Jamie Aletto had her. Jamie Aletto had her, and yes. Tori showed it in Harrisburg, and I was like, oh mm. my gosh, what a lovely mare. I know she's going on to be with and a couple different people. I think Sterling yeah, Ray. Bill, Bill, Shaw yeah, Bill Shaw bought her for Sterling Malnick, yep. and then Sterling uh, decided she wanted to concentrate on the jumpers. And so. And I think she's brought this little girl from maybe even Children's Hunters up to 3-6 Juniors. She looks like she'd be the perfect one for that job. That was a very, very unfortunate rail. I don't know from our angle, maybe she got there a little bit too deep. I don't, just a mistake on the horse's part. Another good mare. Yep. You know, just talking about this round, like that that particular turn from that jump to the two stride, really a place you would love your horse to land on the correct lead. Because as you're bending and having to get the lead changed, sometimes that's a lot more difficult, you know, than if you have more time on the straight line and a couple of horses now have had a mistake with that lead change. And that, that line pretty much leads you right to yes. the middle of the ring. Yep jumping right into the stands the horses have no idea where they're going next i mean me who lives in fear of lead changes i like it when they just land every lead. 
That and would it make it really does make the, court, the the round more beautiful. It really does. That would make life easier. I know. Score is uh, 45 across the board uh, with that unfortunate rail for Catherine Mercer and Primrose. That will go to a uh, rider qualifying out of the older amateur owners. Here is Stephanie Donhockel. Stephanie is on the 14-year-old Royal Dutch Wormblood Gelding bright side. Bright side is by Ultimo out of Tiara. She uh, is based in Dover, Massachusetts. Rides with Scott Stewart and Ken Berkeley at River's Edge. Art historian, mother of two, a 12-time qualifier for this spectacular, and a three-time WCHR amateur national champion. I just have one thing to say. I don't know who cried more, the younger amateurs out of relief that she aged out or the older amateurs that now she's an older amateur. She and I actually <laughs> share the same birthday, many years apart, but uh, we, say we share the same birthday, and uh, yes, that's all that my <laughs> clients that show in the older amateurs could say was, oh, gosh. Just add another one to our group. And when is your birthday? January 26th. What did you turn, 35? Just dyslexia. <laughs> God, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, again. Uh, this is a great writer. Stephanie yes. is a great writer. Nice girl. Again, somebody that supported our industry for a long time and been very loyal to her trainers on both coasts. Yep. She's had so many great horses. I think when I was working for Jack Steady, and I'm, I'm pretty sure Traditions might have been our first junior hunter, which we sold to her. She's such a good owner for her horses too, because as we all know, horses get hurt, they get injuries, stupid things. Sometimes they have to be retired. Sometimes they need one year, two years, yep. and she seems to give her horses whatever they need. If they need to be retired, they're retired. I think this horse has been a little bit injury prone his whole career with her, and he's either resting and getting better or winning with her yes. in the ring. Or winning. And, I mean, she just, she's showing a couple in the adults last week that have been off for two years, and she's just a great owner, great girl. And loves riding and competing. She landed there with a big old smile. Yeah, Havens and I were talking, but it looked like a really good round. I think he did a swap uh, somewhere. I saw a little shift. I okay. don't know if he swapped, but. Is it out of the line? Yes. Into the line, maybe. The gray line. That's what a jump. Time. Yeah. Scott Stewart. No. Scores are 84, 83, 75, 83.5. That's an 83, 75 average score. And that will go into fifth place. Our cutoff to make it back for the second round now. Coulter and Sophie Gottron with a 77, 16. And here is the second ride for current world champion hunter rider, Kate Conover, the 13 year old Holsteiner mare, Queen Celeste by Cassini One out of uh, Sammy Joe, owned by the Glade Run Farm of Pittsburgh. Kate Conover based in Ocala, Florida, riding for Tom Wright and Mitchell Lake Robinson. Winner of the WCHR Pro Finals last year as a rider. And uh, this uh, combination won the Aiken Hunter Classic last season and second in the $100,000 Spectacular in Traverse City last summer. I mean, to me, this horse's canter is just remarkable. So I was watching. Scooby. I was watching Nick canter her in the schooling area the other day, just and I was just Wonder like, Rider. "He's just galloping, <laughs> and she's just holding her rhythm." She's just cruising. It's like yeah. nothing's happening. Yeah, this horse. Um, she's had a great career. She, Haley, uh, Jane Rolfe, and her father Alex started her for Pony Lane Farm, and then she went uh, for to John French for a little bit. And then Tom Botter and uh, Laura Corret, who owns her, has also been a very longtime client of Tom's. Um, she actually rode with Tom when I worked for him before we even went private with Linders. Um, so she's also been a great supporter of the industry. She stopped riding for a little while to have kids and 
she's come back and she shows her in the adult hunters some and what a great horse. He kind of just gets a lick and just. I don't know what the yeah. judge is say, but that might be my favorite round so far. Yeah, I think unless we miss something, that was pretty slick. As to Oliver's point earlier, it's just a horse who loves her job because you can't say she's new to it. Nope. She's a seasoned veteran. She's done it many times in many arenas, and she still looks many like, people. let's do it. Let's go. Let's go to win. Well, Parker Peacock and Acclaim currently lead. They've been in the lead for quite some time now on an 86-3-3. And the uh, scores are coming in for Kate. We have an 89, 91, and 88. That will give them an 89-3-3, and that is your new leading scorer. Kate Conover and Queen Celeste will go to the top. Acclaim and Parker Peacock drop to second. John French and Babylon are in third. And Kate on her first ride, Damas de Tener, round out the top four. Excellent judging. <laughs> we'll we go just, to maybe we can do it one day. I picked that one. <laughs> Cheryl Olson and uh, the owner here of Lafitte de Muse, uh, Amanda Steed, uh, qualified to show in the class out of the 3 6 performance division. 13 or 15, 14 year old uh, Belgian. Uh, Red uh, Gelding by Darko out of Everly Chin de la Palme. Amanda riding out of her Ash Meadow Farm. 2021 winner of this class was a uh, WCHR national champion. Winner of the Pro Finals at Capital Challenge. Lafitte's six time qualifying to compete in this class. Again, a winning combination. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think you kind of have to put this horse in the same category as Babylon. Yes. It's been on a different career path because it's a prof professional's right. horse instead of a junior's horse. It hasn't had to campaign as much maybe as Babylon did to qualify for the shows. She's been able to pick and choose what she wants to show him in. Um, but his resume is really huge. Long. Especially the three six, he looks so relaxed. Yes, yeah. Doesn't have to quite try quite as hard. I think he's been in the top three in this class like three times, maybe three or four times. He's a ambassador for the Equus Foundation, so all of his prize money goes to help um, rescue horses. Oh, fantastic! That's kind of a really cool thing that his owner has done. That's awesome. I think when you compare the round that we're watching now and the round that we just watched with Kate, mm -hmm. you can pick which horse you like better in your opinion, but the rounds are very compatible. Are very compatible. Yep. Kate's horse looked more comfortable with yeah. the with the surroundings. Played a little bit there. Yeah. So I was gonna say yeah. in between the jumps, Queen Celeste looked much more relaxed, relaxed. and consistent. Yeah, absolutely. And Amanda looked like she was managing it a little bit. Yeah, and we saw where it fell apart there at the end which she did a very good job managing it. All the uh, scores coming in. Amanda scores 88-5, 87-5, and an 86 for an 87-3-3. And that will go into the second spot on the leaderboard right now. So it's Queen Celeste and Kate Connor in the lead. Amanda and Lafitte de Muse in second. Acclaim and Parker Peacock rounding out the top three. As uh, we move on, here is a young rider. Competes in the uh, younger small juniors, Faith Schudemeyer. 
is aboard Ernest. A Leslie Moore and Tree Faith was the winner of the Taylor Harris Insurance Services National Children's Medal Finals last year. The uh, gelding she is aboard is uh, by El Claim out of Helinda. Leslie Moore Palm Beach is the owner. Peter Pletcher, Michael Delafandra, and Christian Schudemeyer are the trainers. Here's Ernest and Faith Schudemeyer. I don't know this kid at all. All I know is she wins a lot. <laughs> So I'll be happy. Seems all the ones you don't know win a lot. Well, that's probably good. I don't know. Yeah. I guess I don't get to don't the Don't meet Sandy if you want to be a winning <laughs> rider. <laughs> we don't get to spend a lot of time in the junior no, hunter ring. No, definitely not the junior hunter ring. This horse is with Peter Pletcher, and Peter showed it a couple years ago as a pre-green horse, and then it was doing 3-3 junior. Uh, I saw it do 3-3 junior at indoors last year, but it is showing first-year green this year, so... Now you add a first-year green horse with a junior rider on it, where uh, this is this would be quite a big a, a test. Yeah, a big test for a first-year horse with a junior rider. So far, so good. Oh, oof. So I think that's where the first year horse comes in. Things like that can happen because that certainly wasn't a pilot error. No. going away from the gate just maybe saw something or thought he saw something yeah I think that line going away from the gate with the big standards right out of the gate sometimes if you don't give them enough time to see exactly where they're going they get their eye on a lot yep. of things and but once again she doesn't really nope get she too did. flustered nope. right she, okay. she came right back and just said let's go Lovely rider, lovely horse. She'll be back next year. Well, the uh, scores will be coming in here for Faith. Uh, again, not uh, her night, but just an honor as it is just to qualify here for this uh, competition. One of the hardest classes. Record numbers showing here this week at WAP. And unfortunately, uh, with the uh, score of 40 across the board, she'll average of 40 for Faith Schudemeyer and Ernest. We'll go to uh, Tori Colvin, the six time winner of this class. And Tori is uh, in on Southland from SG Equestrian LLC. Irish Sport Horse Gelding by Obos Quality out of Gildon Crest. The, uh, Entry uh, here is an eight-year-old, eight-year-old gelding, three-time Derby Finals winner as well for Tori and her accolades. And this uh, horse, champion pre-green at Harrisburg last season, multiple championships uh, this season in the three-six greens. Tori Colvin and Southland. Wow, I guess none of us really thought about this pair. Well, we were picking the winners of the class, right? Yeah, you can never count out Tori. But Absolutely not. It is a first-year horse, and uh, he already looks a little starstruck. Yep. Uh, but she doesn't think Tori, so. Tori can work her magic <laughs> anytime. Never, she's not noticing. Never so, count her somehow out. Somehow she's never nervous. <laughs> no. And it just calms the horse down. Yes. Yes. I, I don't think anything has phased this girl since she was probably about seven years old and gone on a pony or maybe younger she is just a, a, as much of as you can say a natural on a horse I don't know if she could tell you how no. she does it it just happens yep kind of like the female version of Rodney Jenkins 
She can sit on anything. Yeah, she's definitely a cautious just there, just right? You're having to babysit a little bit. Just going yeah. to give him a nice, ex the yeah. nicest experience that she can. He definitely. I've, I've had seen, him there, and yeah. I've seen this horse go a lot, and this is definitely not his nature. But as you can see, if you've been to a horse show and you look around, uh, not that many people usually sitting by the hunter ring. You know, no. The big crowd here on hand tonight. It's a lovely horse. They're going to win a lot of classes, a lot more classes, I should say. Yeah. They've already won a lot. So you're just kind of. Petting him yeah, a little bit there, right? Yeah. Petting him a little bit. Yeah. going along. She's saying, come on. Probably talking come to on, him Come on, buddy. Too. We got this. Very nice horse. Torian Southland finishing up their score. We have seen 22 of the 28, six more at the 3-6 uh, height to go. Doing a masterful job, just uh, again giving this horse a nice reassuring ride around. 65, a 69, and a 70 and a half. Uh, that will give us a 68, 1, 6, 68, 16 for Southland and Tory. Cutoff uh, for 12th place to make it through uh, is an 81 from Ariana Marnell and for Lou's Lady. Our best score is Queen Celeste and Kate Conover's 89.33. And here is a two time winner of this class, a seven time World champion hunter rider is in the iron, Scott Stewart, on Dr. Betsy Parker's Cerulean Blue. Seven year old Oldenburg Stallion by Duran out of Vivanetta Blue, owned by Dr. Betsy Parker, Middleburg, Virginia. Combination champion and reserve multiple times in the uh, three six greens and green confirmation for the green incentive finals reserve champions last year. Scott bought this horse uh, in December of 2022 out of the PSI auction of Paul Shockamall. And I tried him and I was trying to buy him and he bought him instead. And I'm very jealous. I loved riding this horse. He also obviously is a first year green horse with not a lot of experience. If you didn't say that most people would not even notice that, right? He's already just dialed, and the horse looks so relaxed. He's, His ears are kind of flopping, and yeah. just looks super relaxed. Yeah. And well, so many of the Scott's horses. A genius. So many of the horses that Scott does as young horses show a couple times, and then go on to incentive and capital challenge, and then yep. you don't see him again, and they come back in this year, and they jump around in their first year champions. Yep, they know what they're doing. Lovely horse. His program does not take him and pound him all all year round. It's pick and choose where they come out such a great expression yeah he had a great expression great yeah, the kind of little bit crusty neck he's a he's a stallion really nice canner we, i tried him he was five years old and he was just made to be a hunter he had the canter he had the mm -hmm. jump attitude the mentality and does he have babies um i oh, oh no oh, um, crickets. i don't i don't believe that they bred him over there okay um, again just a green mistake but what a great experience yeah oh, lovely I horse 
handled the atmosphere very, very well. Even now, he's just kind of looking super chill. A lot of scope. He'll jump the bigger jumps. Yeah. Amazing. But Scott's got another chance, so never ruling him out. Nope. Especially on gray horses. You got two gray horses. That's tonight. what I'm saying. Cause I'm thinking back to catch, catch me. me. Uh, scores of 46, 46, and 46 for a 46 average with an unfortunate rail for Scott and Cerulean Blue. Christian Dominguez, uh, we saw him earlier in the uh, class. So he's back on his second ride. This time it's the eight-year-old Royal Dutch Wormblood Mare, Kingdom by Cantos. Jen Hannon and Ocean Echo Farms are the... Uh, Trainers, uh, the large junior division, the older large, this is uh, where they qualified out of. Two times champion at WEF uh, this season, champion at Upperville last year for Christian Dominguez and Kingdom. This young gentleman has a beautiful position. Another good mare. This one, I think, is this a mare? Mm-hmm. That's what they said. Kingdom? That's what it says. A gelding. No, he's a gelding. Oh, yeah, well gelding. They wrote mare on their bio. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like it may be We're just going to let that go. We're just letting it go. <laughs> it identifies as a mare. <laughs> this horse actually did the class last year as a first-year horse with Grady Lyman, who works with uh, Chris Payne and Dave Belford at New Hope. Okay. And... Um, Chris Sorensen of Sorensen Stables owns this horse, and um, they lease it from him. And Lovely. Chris Sorensen sources a lot of Dave and Chris's horses, and they're always right. beautiful, scopy, really Do nice all. hunters. Check all the boxes. Why did taking a block off that wall? I thought maybe that mm -hmm. too. Or at least it shifted. Something it. happened. It was a scopy horse. Looks a little bit strong tonight. He's dealing with it quite nicely. Yes. They all seem to want to jump that in and out a little bit on an angle almost. Coming home, I guess. Uh, yeah. Um, and that looked like the horse of Scott's maybe just got a little confused with that when he had the rail. Maybe didn't focus on the out quite as much as he needed to and yeah. was thinking about just coming home. Well, looks like a block did come off. Scores of 45 and a half, 47 and a 44 and a half. 45, 6, 6, uh, the uh, score for Christian and Kingdom. Four more to go at this height, and then we'll make a quick adjustment here up to the uh, five entries at three foot nine. Hallie Robinson coming back on her second mount. She comes back with a bye for being the uh, WCHR National Developing Pro Champion. This time she's aboard Sophia Gremley's Carcendro. Owned by Sophia Gremley out of Harvard, Massachusetts. Hallie Robinson, Santa Barbara, California is the rider. Trained by Patty Harnoy. So since you mentioned that Haley was with Patty and Holly Hill before. She's teaming up with her old team for a catch ride. Yeah. Nice to see our West Coasters venturing east here. 
to uh, compete in this uh, class again. I miss having the guts to hear. I know. I'm sure everybody else doesn't, though. No, it they're probably her. cheering. <laughs> The other one we're missing in this class tonight is Liza Towel Boyd. Yep. She always shines in these events. And we don't hear her father with his uh, traditional whoop that sounds more like somebody hit his foot with a hammer. <laughs> her daughter Elle will probably be in this class next year, so. They rode last week in the uh, Hunter Team Challenge, which raised money for the Boys and Girls Club here in Wellington. We got a piece of it out of the 14 teams that were competing. Oh, the block came off again. Elle's riding. She started riding in the jumpers, and I've leased them a little horse that we bought in France that didn't really want to be a hunter, and he loves his little jumper job, and she was second in the Classic last week. That's awesome. So, once again, I've adopted somebody else's child. <laughs> it's easier that way. <laughs> then you can send them home at the end of the day. <laughs> it's a super useful, sweet horse. He's a good steady Eddie for sure. Yeah. Scores uh, for uh, Halley, they had a block off the wall, 44.50. A 44 and a 44.25 for a 44.25 average score, 44.25. Down to three left at uh, this height uh, before we adjust up to the uh, three nine entries. Here is Kate Haggerty out of uh, Dearborn, Oregon, riding for the Haggerty family. Qualified out of the uh, small junior older section. This is Magic Moment. Gelding by Dorado out of Adina Van de Huskins. 13-year-old Royal Dutch Warmblood. Rides with Val Renahan out of Finley's Ridge. She is uh, assigned to Auburn's Division I equestrian team next season. Third in the Dover Medal Finals in 2023 together, and they were sixth at the WEC Equitation Cup last week in uh, Ocala. And uh, qualifying for this class, uh, those are her two highlights, she said, of this season for her. Here's... Kate Haggerty and Magic Moment. Val produces so many great riders. She does. They all have such a good feel. Yep. This must be a pretty special horse. I've never really seen him. I've not seen him in person. But he got out of quarantine, imported last year, like four or five days before Derby Finals. Oh, gosh. And showed with Brian Figus, who rides uh, for Amos Spadone. Right. And was fourth in the first round. Wow. I think he got a little excited at night, which is completely understandable. And then Kate bought him, and two months later, they were third at medal finals. He wears a lot of hats. And then they bring him here, show him Junior Hunter, and qualify for the class. So he must be pretty spectacular. I love when you can see a line coming straight at us like we're watching it on the computer, the live feed, just to see just how balanced some of these riders are. Yes. They never waver left or right at all.
Well, the crowd liked it. See what the judges think. That was a pretty nice round. A little exuberant for the first yep. lead change. But Other than that, I thought he settled right down and very smooth. Really nice ride. Well, the uh, score to beat will be an 89-3-3 from Queen Celeste and Kate Conover. And we have an 89-5, 90, and 87. And that will be an 88-83. And by less than half a point, they will sit in second place. 88-83. And that goes into second. Cut off uh, to make it into the second round now is Adriana Forte and Shakira's 81.83. The top uh, three right now, Queen Celeste and Kate Conover, Kate Haggerty and Magic Moment, Lafitte to Muse and Amanda Stege. And we'll see Circa next. Glade Run Farms entry out of Pittsburgh, Nick Ennis had a buy into tonight's class by virtue of his performance last season. An eight-year-old Mayor Holsteiner Mayor by Casal out of U2 the second. Uh, Glade Run Farms, the owner, Nick Hannes out of Temecula, California, rides the entry train by Tom Wright and Mitchell X. Robinson. Circa and Nick Hannes. National Hunter Hall of Fame Rider of the Year last season, leading Hunter Rider at Devon, USCF Equestrian of the Year in 2019. Combination of the Horse and Rider, Champion 3 6 Green at WEF, uh, Champion 3 6 Green at WEF this week, and the winner of the National Derby in Traverse City at uh, the fourth week of the uh, Great Lakes Equestrian Festival. Oh, I haven't seen her do the 3-6 yet. I, mean, I loved her as a 3-3 three, three horse think for sure. this is only the third time she did it. I don't this think they Well, n with Nick coming back and forth from California, I think they have to pick and choose when they show. Um, Nick actually imported this horse from Meredith and Marcus Beerbaum. And for an amateur of hers, Ashley Wyman, uh, amateur of his, sorry. Um, and then Tom saw it and bought it for Laura. And since the horse was five, they've been producing it. So she actually did pre-green as a five-year-old and a six-year-old. And last year, she kind of hung out, did a national derby, some performance hunters, grew up a little bit. Yeah, she's lovely. And now she's here ready to shine. I feel like the... The, the mares are taking control of tonight. Yeah, there's been a lot of mares. Again, just such a great athletic canner, scopey. Nice. Really nice. Such a great rider, Nick. Like, he was not expecting her to land left. Nope. I think and he was really hoping her to <laughs> land right. <laughs> <laughs> and he just took his time. He didn't panic, like, oh, my gosh, I got to get over there to that jump. He just took his time, made sure everything happened, and then galloped up to the last jump. I think her jump into the two-stripe was one of my favorite jumps of the night. She jumped him out of his tie almost. 89-3-3 is the high score. Kate uh, Conover and Queen Celeste are the uh, best at this point as we have the scores coming in for Circa and Nick. See if we get a change uh, in the top three here. One score to come in. You can follow along with the scoring at showgroundslive.com at Wellington International. Just uh, click on the live ring. You'll see an 85.5, 88.25, 89. That's an 87.91 and third place. 87.91 goes into third. 
One left to go here at the uh, three foot six height, and that is Jeffrey Hessling's second ride. Shadowfax Equestrian and Lacey Howell's entry, Monarchy. The seven year old uh, Wormblood Gelding by Melito de Rev out of La Tichy de la Lanière. Trained by Brendan Williams out of Hess Lake and Williams. They qualified as champion in the green confirmation. As champion at Capital Challenge, uh, winner of the $10,000 green stake in Harrisburg and the EMO High Point trip of the show at Capital Helen Challenge and uh, at Harrisburg. Champion this week and his first time ever showing at the 3-6 height. Well, it's obviously his record already makes him a great horse. Yeah. If this is his first week of showing at 3-6. What a week to pick to be your breakout week. Exactly. <laughs> Let these guys know what they're doing. They do a great job. interesting that jump and the last jump how many horses you think would land on the lead that yeah you would want as a rider but they don't yeah but like at this last jump you have the option of turning either way either way so it's not so much at the last jump with that end jump you think just with the wall there they would tend to want to go to that left lead yeah yeah nice horse As Jeffrey uh, makes his closing circle, our ring crew springs into action here to adjust up for the uh, three foot nine height. And the scores will start coming in here momentarily. Monarchy uh, as uh, the scores come in with uh, the ride for Jeffrey Hessling. Again, our judging panels, panel one, which is located on the front of the gallery here, the nightclub uh, on the grounds, Mark Young here and Mary Euphemia. By the Central Park location, Chris Wynn and Shane George. On the International Club side of the ring, it's Mary Lisa Leffler and Wendy Peralta. And the scores were 87.5, 86, 82, 75 for an 85, 41 going into ninth place right now. 85, 41. Cutoff uh, to come back uh, is an 82.5 right now, sitting in 12th place. And we have five that will be joining us at the three foot nine height. And then we'll adjust for the two qualifiers out of the high performance division showing at four feet. And we'll take a quick breather here as our ring crew uh, making adjustments uh, to the uh, course. And we'll be back with you with the five second year horses in just a moment. Thank you. 
Well, Jacob Pope uh, joins us here as we pick up. He is on unbelievable high-performance confirmation uh, hunter where they qualified out of. Stephanie Mazur's Forget Me Not Farm are the owners of uh, this horse. Uh, they have uh, been top uh, horse in the 3-9 and 4-foot divisions, big derby uh, placings all, all last summer. Uh, Jacob's been riding this horse, I think, for about two years now. Not only is he having great success here, but in the jumper ranks, he's been jumping a lot of clear rounds here in the Grand Prix uh, this season. And uh, also uh, represented uh, Team USA on multiple occasions last year on the European Tour. Jacob Pope and Stephanie Mazur in the Forget-Me-Not Farms. 14-year-old warm blood mare, unbelievable. I have a lot of fun watching this pair. Um... I mean, you, as a hunter, you might not think the movement is good enough or whatever, but Jacob looks like he has the best time riding her. She looks like she has the best time jumping, and her jumping style is pretty cool to watch. Horse always does jump right out of its skin. Yes, she does. And the horse's ears are always mm. little swap. right forward. Little swap there. Jacob's another one that's nice to watch. He just always is following the horse. He's always with the horse. And such a nice person. 
And a hard, hard, hard yep. worker. Again, another young, great up and coming professional. Well, that was the first of our five at the uh, three foot nine heights. Waiting the uh, scores for Jacob. Eighty-three and a half, uh, eighty-five and a half, and an eighty-two one five is an eighty-three seventy-one. That will sit in eleventh place right now. Eighty-three seventy-one in eleventh. The twelfth place cutoff now is an eighty-three six six. And here is uh, John French on his second buy of the night. He had a buy for winning the class last year with Milagro. And he chose to take out uh, as his second mount tonight, Paradigm, the horse that uh, he won the International Hunter Derby Finals on last year in Lexington, Kentucky. This was the uh, USCF Horse of the Year for the uh, national disciplines last uh, year, the Hunter of the Year. I John has well earned the Hunter of the Year honors. This horse was uh, did this class last year too. I think I think maybe he was fourth. Owned by Meredith Lipke. I'm sure if he did it, he got a ribbon. Twelve-year-old gelding. I had the joy of riding uh, Fifty Shades for Meredith Lipke. Such a great horse. She's a, another great owner, great supporter of the horse shows and the hunter industry. This horse came from Mike McCormick and Tracy Finney at MTM Farm. Another great rider, great horseman. I think it's so great to have John back on the East Coast. I know you grew up in Maryland, but... Yeah, and so did Oliver. We but were all here together. I don't remember John when he was on the East Coast. <laughs> Well, we're, we're a just little of the older vintage and not uh, much. But. He rode just like this and won just as many classes back then as he does no. now. I know he was on the East Coast, and at his Hall of Fame induction, he was so funny telling stories. But it is nice to have him around and get to know him better yes. than I did. A quiet, funny person. Great guy. And a great rider. I could tell stories about uh, his mom when she used to teach John and I when we were younger. <laughs> Great family. Those are the good old days. It's a great camera angle at the first jump there. Or not the first jump, but that jump. Is that the first jump? That's the first jump, yes. Yeah, he was so slick there. He yeah, for to the make sure that swap well, didn't happen. Babylon got him there. Yep. He wasn't he letting it happen it twice. Happen twice. <laughs> well, the uh, score is coming in. High score, Queen Celeste and Kate Conover in 89.33. 86.75 from panel one, 89.5 from panel two, and 86.25 from panel three on the International Club side of the ring for an 87.5 going into fourth place right now. And uh, that will change the cutoff. Uh, Jacob Pope, an unbelievable right now, an 83.71, sits in 12th. Here is uh, McQueen. This was the WCHR Horse of the Year last year. Nick Hennis uh, on the Welcome Back Equestrian Entry out of Paradise Valley, Arizona. Ten-year-old uh, Royal Dutch Warm Blood Gelding by Cornette Obolensky. Let's just start with saying I haven't seen anybody float the reins like this when they walked into the ring until this horse. He knows this horse so well. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> he obviously trusts him a lot. 
he told me this horse came from Desiree Johnson in Holland. And okay. then Carlton Brooks got him and campaigned him last year until incentive finals. And that's when uh, Walken Bucks bought him. But Nick got to keep the ride, and they were almost unstoppable at indoors, I think. I can see why. Especially if you walk in the ring everywhere you go and you got a loop in the reins, right? Yeah. I can't be for certain, but I think maybe he won a big night class out in California last year. So he, I think, has some experience little under bit the of a light. Veteran. Yep. Lovely horse. More than checks all the boxes. Yep. Maybe a little rub there. Well, even with the rub, it was a really nice round. Nice round. So many good riders, so many good horses. Those top rounds, it just, again, comes down to opinion yep. of which jumping style you like better, which canter Can you like, like better, better yep. which way of riding style yep. you like better. And that comes down to personal opinion. Well, Kate uh, Conover and Queen Celeste, they sit on an 89-33. So scores coming in for McQueen and Nick. One score to come in. So far, pretty good uh, scores. We have a 91, 89, 75, and 88, 5 for an 89, 7, 5. And by fractions, that will be our best score of the night so far. 89, 75. And uh, McQueen goes uh, on to the top position now on the leaderboard. Queen Celeste drops down to second. Magic Moment to third. And Circa and fourth paradigm in fifth. Here we go with uh, Calvary, Holly Orlando on the Calvary Group entry. 12-year-old Belgian sport horse gelding by Agonix de Seigneur out of Cantorel Z. Jenny Dunyan and Evermore Incorporated the trainers to qualify out of the green 3-9 section. Champions in the first years at the Hampton Classic and National Horse Show last season. And champion week three of uh, WEF here in the 3-9 greens. Holly O and uh, Cavalry. And this horse was in the jumper ring for a while, right? This horse was in the jumper ring. Uh, I think Kara Cheska had it yep. um, doing amateur jumpers maybe. Um, Axel Verloy had it in Europe. And uh, I think they actually got it either on trial or bought it or leased it for a jumper. Okay. And then when Holly and Jenny got it, they were like, hmm. And I think Holly was riding him as a jumper, and she fell in love with him. And uh, last year, Holly called me at the end of Florida to ask me, could I please help her think back on all the people that she'd ridden horses for her whole entire career to try to get enough money to buy the horse for her. Okay. Um, because she, believed she, him so she much. loved yep. him. She believed in him. And, oh. well, as we all get older, she thought this was going to be yep. her horse to do whatever she wanted to do for the ending time of her career. 
Um, it's a lovely horse. And I think when he gets in a big venue like this, she's had a lot of success. But when he gets in a big venue like this, he's not a younger horse. He's in, I think he's 12 right. or 13. He's had a lot of jumper years experience. So I think sometimes that comes back to get him a little bit. Got it. But a super scopey horse. And I hope to see her back in the derbies. She will be. That was too bad. Looks like he just didn't sight in on the second part yeah. of that gray line. Again, not such another beautifully balanced rider. Holly's scores are 67, 65, and 66. That's a 66 average score for a Cavalry and Holly Orlando. We're down to three left in the class. One more at the uh, three foot nine height, and that is Scott Stewart, qualified in the high performance confirmation here on Nottingham, the 12 year old Oldenburg gelding by Verdi, owned by Dr. Betsy Parker in Middleburg, Virginia. So you said, Scott, a seven time world champion rider of the year, professional rider of the year. He is a leading rider at Devon, Harrisburg, Washington, the National. Capital Challenge, you name it. Just keep He's going, Oliver. <laughs> Just keep going. I mean, what do you want to say? I could go down the list of horse shows in the, this country. The champion uh, here is the and, Michael Jordan uh, of horses. <laughs> and high uh, performance confirmation. And. Uh, I guess, yeah, he's a Michael Jordan or Steph Curry of yep. horses. Uh, if you want to take the winning shot, to somebody to take the winning shot or attempt yep. it, he's one of those guys you're going to throw the ball to. And he's a great, great person and great exhibitor. My parents sold their big house and moved to a smaller house, so my mom called me and said, okay, you have to take all your boxes. I'm not keeping them anymore. So I took them and put them in storage, and when I sold my house, I needed to get them get out of the storage. <laughs> And I opened one box and it had all these ribbons in it. And one was the leading hunter rider from Devon at 2001. I took a picture of it. I sent to Scott. And I said, you must not have been alive then. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty much, I think Nick got it. Uh, Nick knocked him out of that uh, this year, I think, or last year. For his consecutive years? Yeah, well, I mean. I think yeah. for consecutive, anybody. Consecutive, it's like 10. Or just total years. Yeah. Okay, total. Got, it, got it, yeah. This is another horse that came out of the Paul Schalkemerler breeding operation in Germany. And uh, actually, Sharon Wardley bought it from PSI. And then Scott bought it from Sharn. I've always liked this horse. It's a great horse. Shiny gray horse. It's hard to make them shine. Nope. I mean, to me, unless I miss something, that goes to the top. Yeah, that was beautiful. Never did a lead change. Jumped every jump exactly the same. Well, we will see what the judges thought. 89.75 is Nick and McQueen's uh, leading score. Queen Celeste and Kate Conover are in uh, second with an 89.33. Kate Haggerty, junior rider with uh, 88.83 with Magic Moment. Nick Hannes and Circa on an 87.91 in fourth in Paradigm. And John French on an 87.5. Ooh, scores are looking nice here for Scott as they come in. One more score to see. As we are adjusting up to our two four-foot horses. 90, a 92, and an 89 for a 90.33, and right to the top of the leaderboard. I think the three of us should judge together. <laughs> I tell you, you know, it's, it's going to be an interesting <laughs> second round. They're very close together yes, at the very top. very close. And they're really, nobody can be cautious. They're going to no, have to they're really, all gonna they're going to have it. to go all out. I know, we all know Scott has a hand gallop. He's going to go faster than anybody. 
And there's no trot jump, so that's a bonus. Or a walkover. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much, Oliver. So as we adjust for our four-foot entries, uh, we'll take a quick uh, break here, and we'll be back with you in just a few moments for the final two entries in round one of our Peter Weatherill Hunter Spectacular here from Palm Beach with that $100,000 purse tonight. The uh, top 12 uh, cutoff right now is at 85-41 from Monarchy and Jeffrey Hesslink with just two to go. We'll be back in just a moment. Greg Krolik uh, just finishing up his warm up here and uh, headed up to the gate. Came up, took a quick peek, and then circled back. We will see our two four foot horses to uh, wrap up round number one. Then that top 12 will be coming back. And uh, we will come back. The height of the uh, leading horse, which right now is three foot nine, will be the last height to jump. The uh, railroad gate comes up, and uh, there we see Greg Krolik uh, just getting his horse uh, gathered up here as he comes out of the uh, holding area here in the uh, Wellington International International Ring. And here is Catwalk, first of two to wrap us up from Renaud Farms of Gross Point, uh, Michigan. Greg Krolik of Clarkston, Michigan has the ride out of the Greg Krolik Stables. The 12 year old Holsteiner Gelding by Katoki out of Assini. Top eight international derby during WEF 4, reserve champion high performance at WEF 4, qualified and finished derby files in 2023 with his junior rider. And the highlight of the current year, three horses in the top eight of the international derby during WEF for a uh, rider, Greg Krolik. And he is aboard Catwalk, his mount tonight in our $100,000 WCHR Peter Weatherill Palm Beach Hunter Spectacular. Greg's a great guy. He works hard. Always has um, more four-foot horses than probably yes. any professional <laughs> around now. Always has two or three of them. He loves showing in the derbies. Daughter's a really good rider. Kind of a little bit of family business. His wife is involved. His sister-in-law's involved. It's always nice to see. Now 
was hoping to see his other horse, Chappie, tonight. But Love Chappie. Love the Chappie. Did he show this week? He did yeah, show this week. Qualify. I, I don't know what, what happened. That's the hard part. Just the champion in reserve from the divisions uh, make their way in, unless one is qualified already, and then the next one would move up just for a couple of spaces. Or you have to get that by by yep. winning one of the big qualifiers last season. Didn't he win the Emerging Pro not that long ago? Oliver, do you remember? Mm, I'm not sure. It was a tough year to qualify this year. There were, I'm thinking, multiple horses with multiple scores, classes in the 90s that still didn't qualify. Right. Tough group. Yeah, a lot, it should of, be this lot week. of depth this this yeah. year on this week. It it's like indoors, you know, but more horses, <laughs> more people coming yeah. in. It you know it it doesn't take qualifying all year long. It takes you have to be on this week, peaking this week. Pretty nice round. Looked nice, yeah, yeah. Very solid. It's a 90.33, the high score, and a score of 85.41 is the score you need to beat. Uh, that is the 12th place score to make it into the second round. Very smooth, very consistent. Last one comes trotting in, waiting for those scores for uh, Greg and Catwalk. Scores of 87.25, 88.5, and 86.5, and 87.41. That goes into seventh. He's assured of a spot into the second round. And here is our final entry of the first round. Chris Payne on his second ride. This time he rides for Provence LLC. And they qualified out of the high performance. It is Rain, the 11-year-old Holsteiner Stallion, our final entry in round number one. I just got confirmation that Greg did win the Virgin Pro. I'm not sure exactly what year. I love it when my memory still works. <laughs> that older time, yeah, getting older, the senior moment. That's a great, that's a great class. It's a great pipeline because now we've seen at least two tonight, right? And Vivian, three. Three? Three. Vivian, Haley, and Greg? At least three. I feel like there should be one more. It's Chris and Rain. This is another great partnership been together a long time so he obviously did the four foot this week he did do the four foot this week i think i think he did four foot and three foot six okay i think a lot of people do two divisions this week because we only oh, jump sure. we yeah. only jump three jumping classes so it's not yeah. that much on the horses this horse has been very successful successful champion of the national horse show last year winner of the first Split Rock, $150,000 Hunter Pre. Is this horse this down Yes. Swap again. I 
I think at this point, that point in time of the course, they just know they're headed back home. Yeah, yeah. He looked to get a little yep. strong. Yeah. I don't, I mean, we when we walked the course, I, I guess I didn't pay as close attention as I would have if I was riding because it looks like that in and out is difficult to get to. It's on a difficult track. And when we walked it, I... Coming from the end jump and then yes. where you have to be to next. And yes. Uh, it looks like a little bit of a difficult track. They all get in looking a little sideways. Right leading them to that right-hand corner at the out. Well, that wraps up the action in round number one, and we'll wait the scores on our final entry, Rain and Chris Payne. As uh, they come in, we'll see if he can make his way into that uh, top 12. Scott bit. Stewart with the best score right now of the 90.33. You have to get a score of 85.5 or better, and that is knowingly and Vivian Yowen right now sitting on the bubble. Andy Christensen has done a remarkable job here with the course for round number one. We'll see what he has in store for the riders back in round number two. One score left to come in for Chris. Scores are 86 2 5. 84 2 5, 85 85 for an 84 4 5, and that will not make it in. Sits in 13th, just outside of the top 12. So the riders will be coming back here. We'll see the uh, four foot horse come back first. Uh, it looks uh, like we'll see Greg Krolik and then Catwalk. Then we'll go uh, to our three six uh, entries. Uh, and then finishing up with the three nine rides in the class. So Scott Stewart will uh, come back last in the uh, round, the 12 riders coming back. Uh, again, we will see uh, Greg Krolik with Catwalk. Then uh, Vivian Yowen knowingly when we go down to three six, Kate Conover and Damasta Taner, John French and Babylon, Parker Peacock and Acclaim, Lafitte de Muse and Amanda Steege. Greg Krolik and Catwalk, John French and Paradigm uh, will come back first once we get to the uh, three foot nine height. Uh, we'll see Kate Conover last. Uh, we'll see Kate Haggerty and Kate Conover last out that uh, three six group, and then it will be John French and Paradigm followed by Nick uh, Hennis and Scott Stewart. So. Those are the riders returning. And if you look at it, there is less than five points between the top 12. So anybody can win this class. Anybody can come back on top if they have a, an amazing second round. Oh, it's really close going into this round as uh, our ring crew is in full action here. The drag's in as we get set for round number two coming up. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with you here at the second round shortly here from the Wellington International Equestrian Center and the International Ring. Uh, we'll be back with you in just a few.
Hello, everybody. We are back, and we're going to just talk about this handy round a little bit. Um, it's not really much of a course of which you can slice and dice, because in a ring this large, the jumps are very much spread out. The three jumps in the center here by the gazebo are probably the trickiest part, where you could definitely be a little bit handier. Uh, it's a long gallop to jump one off the right lead, The what would have been the out of the eight to the end jump, left turn to the two stride, long canter all the way up the far side by the VIP tent to the oxer. And this is where the riders have an option between jumps six, seven, and eight. Six and eight can only be jumped one direction, where seven you can uh, change it up if you decide to. And then there's a kind of a roll back to jump nine, and then the 10, the oxer by the gate. The oxer by the gate obviously was not part of the first class, sorry, the first course, so that could produce some problems for people. I can't really tell from up here, but are those like those thin, thin rails, like tree trunk rails that are pretty thin and maybe yeah, not as sturdy if it was to be if somebody was to have a rub? Yeah. All right. Well, here we go with the first horse. First one back, it is uh, our sole four-foot representative here in the second round. It is uh, Greg Krolik and uh, Catwalk for Renaud Farm LLC. He comes back on an 87.41 for this uh, modified handy round. Again, as uh, we will see our 12 coming back, trying to make up some ground. Less than five points separates the top 12. So again, jump six is you know is an option jump, but that also determines what your last jump is. A little rub there behind. And the riders here have to be careful in this option fence that they don't cross their own path. Some of them uh, were trying to think of ways to do it, and we had that problem last week in the uh, hunt team challenge, which had a pinwheel and this uh, snake there with a lot of different options. So if they cross their path, that's a considered a refusal. That was a super nice round. Nice round. Yeah. Really nice round. They rode very well, very smooth. Like I said, it's not a slicing and dicing round because it's just such a big ring and the jumps are far apart. Very consistent, very well ridden. Greg Krolik, our sole four-foot representative, the ring crew uh, out adjusting, and we will adjust for the next uh, height, which will be our three-foot six height. Second round scores coming in for uh, Catwalk and Greg. 88, 88, 87 for an 87, 6, 6. Well done. That's a good way to start the second round. Yep. Everybody's riding for second.
How many three niners do we have? Two or three? Uh, there's um, well, a bunch of them. Scott, Nick. So that's the last group. We're going to three six now. Oh, that's the last. Yeah, that's great. I'm sorry. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. So he had a 175.07 for his uh, score, 175.07 for the two round total. Eighty-seven five three would be the averaged score. Eighty-seven five three. Eighty-seven four one for round one, eighty-seven six six, and eighty-seven five three. Just about to go here with the uh, next tight. So what do we have? All professionals except. You have uh, Kate Haggerty, Parker Peacock, your juniors. Parker Peacock, that's right. The rest are pros. All right. Well, 87.53 is the uh, average uh, mm -hmm. score to beat. You can see the first one uh, coming up through the uh, walkway up under the uh, bridge here. Vivian Yowen, knowingly, they come back on an 85.5. Chris has a good canner. Yeah. Oh, a little trip. So if you were judging, would you take off for that? I don't think so. I mean, I wouldn't. Maybe it's if a minor tiebreaker. If yeah. you're, yeah, I think yeah. if you get to the end and you're like, they're tied, you have okay, to say, yeah. The one that didn't trip was smoother. This horse is really jumping well in this Very round. Well. Was that right behind? I don't know if I was watching close enough. Opens up the gallop a little. Nice. Really nice ride. Yep. It'll be interesting to see what they do with that little stumble. Lovely ride. Nice horse. Did Kelly show this horse when she and Larry had it? Kelly showed it pre-green. Okay. And then um, when it was a first-year horse was when Larry was really not doing very well, and she showed it very intermittently. Okay. And I think uh, Vivian purchased it last year down here. Okay. 
and she had Eleanor Rudnicki do it in mm -hmm. the small juniors last year, and I think it did quite well. Scores for 84, 86, and 85. 85 average for this round, a two-round average of 85.25, 85.25. Here's Kate Conover back now on Damas de Tener, coming back on an 86. And she goes right to the gallop. She wouldn't do anything but. Kate's a great handy rider. As I mentioned when this horse was showing, he scored at 92 in the handy in the three foot nine green this week. So they've already Take, practiced it up yep. this week. Taking no prisoners. I like how she's taking her time there. Make sure her horse stays balanced, doesn't step off his lead. Oh, she's going inside there, didn't she? I mm -hmm. think. She yeah. did. Oh. Oops, swap there. That was too bad. That was a really nice round. One thing Kate does so well, she always gets the horses away from the jump. Yes. Even in the handy, as you said, she's got her balance. She's yep. taking her time, but she's always going to the next jump. Let's see what happened here again. Just stepped off on front, right? Yeah. yeah. First step. It's too bad. Well, that was lovely. Depends on where she was going and where the judges were sitting, but I think they all liked it. 89, 91, and 91, 90 it, 88.16, and that is the new leader, Damasta Tener and Kate Conover. Making up a little bit of that ground on that five-point lead that uh, our leader had. 88.16, the... Uh, New leading score. She had a 90.33 for this round, an 88.16 average. Babylon, John French coming back. 87.5 is their score from round one. Yeah, so Kate's round without that little step off, they probably would all have been in the 90s. It was a beautiful round. The horse jumped beautifully. It's your pick, Ollie. He's back on course. They've had one round together now under the lights. Maybe they'll turn it on for you. Well, we eliminated that problem from the first round. <laughs> hey, he still was less than three points behind the leader, so it's anybody's ball game. I kind of like that there's not a hand gallop jump. You know, it's just, it's making the whole round look much smoother for everybody. And plus, I don't like to go fast. Look pretty good to me. Yep. Like okay. it, go ahead. Well, let's see what uh, the judges think here.
Nice, tight, and efficient round. Yep. I think the judges, at least one panel that so far that scores in. Oh, two panels really liked it. That's a great round. Never had to do a lead change. Jumped every jump the same. Nice and tidy. I think we may see a change at the top here. One more score to come in. Ninety, ninety-three, and ninety-two, and ninety-one, six-six, eighty-eight, eight-seven, and that is the new leader, John and Babylon. Here's Parker Peacock and a claim. Parker coming back on an eighty-six, three-three. This really is a cute horse. It is a cute horse. He always just has a great expression. Mm -hmm. Looks the same. Yep. Jumps every jump nicely. She rides well. Picked up a little gallop there. Maybe not quite as much height as the first two. What a nice round. Nice round. Parker Peacock uh, had an 86-3-3 coming in. Trying to catch John and Babylon leading right now. One more score to come in for this combination, 85-80 and 85-5, 83-5. That's an 84-91 right now. Acclaim and Parker will go into fifth place. Now we'll go to Amanda Steege and Lafitte Demuse coming back on an 87-3-3. All the horses definitely look much more relaxed this round so yes. far. What happened there? I think he had a rail. Yeah. Oh, he did. Oh, gosh. Doesn't well, take she much. She went to try and take a tight turn. And yeah. You know, yeah. Got to take yeah, the risk. Yeah. They're all so close together. And those split rail yep. jumps, you know, they come down a lot easier. Pat, for a longtime partner here, we'll see what... Uh, Scores here be in the uh, mid 40s. For sure. 45, 45. I think Amanda feels this horse doesn't owe her anything, and every no. time she gets to show him is. He keeps going, he keeps winning. It's fun. Yeah, and exactly. It's like the icing on the cake. They, they give it their all every time. 
Well, scores of 45, 45, and 78. Uh, and the one panel sitting on the other side of uh, ring not seeing that rail. 56, uh, the average score actually they changed to a 45. And that makes it a 66, 1, 6 uh, final average score for Lafitte de Muse and uh, Amanda Steach. Now it is Circa and Nick Hennis. They come back on an 87.91, 87.91. I think he took a little bit different track yes, to the first jump, jump, didn't he? Yes. Wow, that was a good jump. See how this horse doesn't show a lot. She knows how to turn it on. Yes. Another really nice that round. Very nice round. Whoa. Oops. She's like, whoa, the gate. McCannis uh, and uh, his ride on Circa. Eighty-six, five, ninety, and ninety-three, and eighty-nine, eighty-three. They'll go into second on an eighty-eight, eighty-seven average. Well, right now, John French and Babylon lead. Nick and Circa will take the uh, second spot on the leaderboard. Kate Conover and Demasta Tener in third. Greg Krolik and Catwalk rounding out the top four. Are Babylon and Circa tied? Oh, they are. Yeah, let's see. Uh, so panel one scores the tiebreaker, and Babylon had a 90 from panel one. So that's uh, the tie-breaking score going right there to separate those two. But Babylon, the virtue of the tie-breaking score from panel one. Kate Haggerty, magic moment. 88-83 was her score. The junior rider, one of the two, Parker Peacock and Kate Haggerty, are two juniors that survived the cut. Swap there. Yep, little swap. Such a nice quality group of horses. Yes. And riders. And riders. Yeah, absolutely. Despite a couple little bobbles, really most of the horses handled tonight really well. A couple green mistakes. The quality of rounds in this class have just gotten so much better over the years with the new lighting, the special footing. Yep. Back in the day when a first year qualified, unless it was super brave, a lot of times you didn't try it. Yep. So many shadows, so many different footing issues with the grass. But now it's nice that everybody, yep. everybody can try. So did she lay in cross carry in there? Or did he no, step when off? it looked like when he went, she went to pull him up, he, he stepped, stepped off, off behind. Kate Haggerty uh, watching uh, 
A little replay here of her second round action. 88-83, her first round score. Those two junior riders should be real happy with them. Yes. Their horses and themselves. Did a great job. Kate Haggerty, 89 5, 89 86, goes into third on an 88 49 two round average score. Behind Babylon and Circa. Now it's Queen Celeste, Kate Conover. Her second time around this course. Two jumps to go. She had an 89-3-3 coming into this round. She wasn't taken back. No. Nope. She wasn't pulling on the reins. She never touched the reins. No risk, no reward. She measures everything so well, though. She has the gallop, but yep. like that ox are on the far side there. She just melted to the base so she could just make the turn back. And then this one, the last jump, no turn after, hand gallop right to it. One more score to come in. She needs to beat an 88-87 two-round average score. Waiting on one judge's panel score. 92, 92, 89, and by fractions, a 90.16 will be their two round average score. And that's the new leader, Queen Celeste on top, then Babylon and uh, Circa. So Kate, John, and Nick right now are your top three. Is it just Scott left? Uh, 92, no, 92, we have, uh, 89. John on Paradigm. Oh, McQueen yeah. with Nick and yeah. Nottingham. So still, still three really good okay. ones. Jeez, we're far from over. That's for sure. Uh, but I'm just saying, Oliver, that uh, our horse is ahead of your horse right now. <laughs> just everybody out there listening, if you remember in the beginning, just clarifying. How about that walk jump? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think everybody out there listening knows about that. <laughs> well, you know, we do have quite an archive here. At, uh <laughs> yes, yes, we do. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And there are the two gentlemen that uh, see uh, J.P. Bordelow and Dave Burton, who just uh, came back for a second there. They uh, are the hardworking guys behind the scenes that uh, run everything here at the Wellington International when it comes to the horse show portion of uh, the rings. Thank goodness for them. And uh, this has been a long, tough week for the pair of them as also the 
FEI action going on up on the Derby field. And uh, we have a full house here of hunters showing this week. Hopefully Mother Nature will uh, cooperate with us for tomorrow's uh, schedule so we can get all of the final day and the classics uh, and stuff done for our jumpers and for the uh, hunters here. And there, if you look just to the right of the uh, ball, you'll see David Burton in the late blue and uh, on the radio there with the blue hat, that's uh, J.P. Bordelow. Is there a big... A uh, big jumper class tomorrow across the street? Uh, Grand Prix was today, and uh, the U25 goes tomorrow. Who won the Grand Prix? Uh, you know, I don't know. I was judging from this side. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, with the technology we have, you I can, can answer, find that out I really can answer that question oh, come for on. you. Come on. Looks like there is just one clear, Oscar Holkers Jr. Shannon won, Richard Vogel was second, Nicola Philipparts was third, and Excellent. Niall Nassar was fourth, and Kathleen Driscoll was fifth. Excellent. So there is your uh, statistician from the day. Okay. So. <laughs> Filling everybody in about what's happening across the road. And we are now at the three foot nine height, and the first rider back, it is John French, and the Derby Finals winner, Paradigm, 87 and a half, his score coming into this round. He's already had one tour around this course on Babylon. We're not really trying to be silent, everybody out there. We're just watching it. Yeah, just sorry. Watching. We're just letting it simmer. In the <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> Let the action speak for itself. This horse is by Carrico, which I think is, he's such a good stallion. He is. A and when you, when we know that now, you yes. can see, you can tell. Yep. We didn't know that, have that information during the first round. We apologize for that. But what a great stallion. Two jumps to go. Oh. Whoa. Ooh, hard shift on the landing side there. A little bit of a spook from all that cheering and yelling. You know, it almost has to be something like that that's unpredictable that are going to have to, you know, separate separate, separate them, everybody. Yeah. But you never know from where the judges are sitting. What they see. Or what they see and where the camera is and yep. what that looked like because really the horse landed on the left lead and, and just, just turned, turned left. Yep. Uh, like he saw the in gate and... Yep. Took a left turn. Well, the scores, one more score to come in for John. He needs to top a score of 90.16. That would be the average of the two rounds to take over the lead. An 87.5 from round one. One score to go. And that, I think if you're the judge, you're like, 
Was he trying to turn that hard? Exactly. <laughs> All right, here we go. 91, 89, 5, 91, 5. It's a 90.66 for this round and 89.08. John will go into second. So Kate Conover and Queen Celeste lead. John is in second with Paradigm, third with Babylon, and Nick Hannes and Circa round out the top four, followed by junior rider Kate Haggerty and Magic Moment. They really are all so close now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not judging this class. As I keep track of the scores with Oliver here, I'm like, are you sure? Oh, yeah, but they're so close. McQueen and Nick Hannes. He comes back. It is an 89.75, his score. I, I've done this class now for probably 16 or 17 years. I thought you were going to say 60. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was around back then, but I would be one at that time then. Uh, but I, I don't ever remember it being this close. This is pretty intense it's, right now. It's, I mean, it's just fractions of a point, a little bobble here, uh, you know. An ear going back yep. could be the difference. <laughs> and, you know, maybe a little bit of the difference is, like this round in particular, is that there isn't a trot jump. Yeah. Right. There isn't something trappy like There's not really a hand gallop. So I think it keeps everybody a little bit more on the same playing field. Because, goodness gracious, everybody knows those trot jumps can be a disaster sometimes. Just like the walk. <laughs> That's right. I don't think they ever had one of those again after I did that. Or actually didn't do the walk jump. That was the problem. That went out the list of things you yes. could offer. <laughs> Thank goodness. I, 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 to I, I took one for the team, Oliver. <laughs> comes to the last fence. <laughs> we'll see what the judges think. There's one enough. left to go. That was a really nice round also. I mean, I you have, see what do you, Queen I, Celeste, you see Paradigm, you see McQueen. I see I mean, it's three different style horses, yes. three different style riders, three uh, different approaches to the course. But nobody did anything wrong. And I, I, I they're mean, all I, really good, and it I think comes down judge, to the judge's I think yeah. as a judge, opinion. it might be really exciting and fun because you're getting to pick between wrong. really good. You're not yes. separ yeah. separating out bad. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, st you're looking yeah. at qu high quality. Whoa. Yeah. 93, 92, 5, 92, 5, and 92, 6, 6. You're looking at the new leader. That is uh, McQueen and Nick. The WCHR Horse of the Year goes with a 91.2 by four one hundredths of a point. That is the new leader. And here's our last to go. Well, Scott Stewart and know. Nottingham. He had a 90.3. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. Well, oh, Nick. Oh, shoot. Oh, our results are in, and, uh, you know, Lafitte de Muse, uh, the refusal's going to be lower than the rail. So, uh, let's see what that average changes back. That's but a bummer. It happens to all of us. Yeah, Scott has either won this class or had something weird happen. Go wrong. <laughs> it's either, you know, there, there's been very little value. He's either been top two or, but. That's all right. He'll be when back you, next when, year. When you have won as much as this man has won. Yep. He'll be back next year. Yeah, you know, I mean, a genius on horseback. And probably one of the best per people to go out and find a young horse. Oh, yeah. He's always creating. I mean, for a lot of these horses are ones that he bought as a young horse and developed all the way through. Yep. They've got a good team of people here in Europe, everywhere, I guess. Yeah. There's people looking out yeah. for him and sending him videos and constantly. It, and you got to, you know, you got to think about the clientele. He's got clients yeah. that have, you know, trusted him over the years, and he's done well by all of them, and that says a lot. I do love this horse, so I'm sad. Well, not the way we wanted it to end. It would have been exciting to see if uh, we could go into just fractions over, you know, yep. but... Anything can happen when they're that close together. And a great horse 
not their night in the second round for Scott Stewart and uh, Nottingham. The win tonight will go to McQueen and Nick Hannes. And then we'll see uh, Kate Conover and Queen Celeste in second. John French with Paradigm third. Babylon, he's fourth. Nick and Circa in fifth. And it was junior rider Kate Haggerty and Magic Moment in sixth. Kate Conover and Damas de Tener in seventh. Greg Krolik was eighth. Knowingly and Vivian Yao in ninth. The Claim and Parker Peacock were tenth. And the 40s across the board for Scott in this round will give him a two round average of 65 16. And they will finish up behind Lafitte de Muse and Amanda Siege in 11th. Scott will finish up with Nottingham in 12th. So bad luck there from first drop down to 12th. But again, a great class tonight. Uh, your thoughts, Havens? I really like the courses. I thought the handy round was exceptional. Um, like I said, you got down to the last three or four horses and three great rounds. And as you said, the judges get to throw out big scores and the best one won. Sandy, your thoughts? Uh, the same thing. Like I really, I, I thought it was a great class. I thought sometimes these classes, you know, if the course gets too tricky, it kind of ends up, you know, deciding the course in a, I mean, the winners in a different way than maybe they should have been. I liked the handy because it was more of a hunt around versus a handy around, and I thought it was still about what horses jumped the best and were the smoothest. And, you know, when you have a class of that many horses that go that well, whatever decision you make isn't wrong. They, they do make a point when you walk the course in the riders' meeting or whatever to say that they've made the second round. It's a second round. Yes. It's not a handy round. And they yep. want you to show brilliance and tight turns and all of that stuff, but they want to show off your horse's jumping ability. Correct. They, they don't want the trot jump to mess you up or the, the walk jump to mess you up or, or fall off or whatever, whatever I, else may be. Whatever so I did over the years. I think when they did change that, it really made the class yes. a, a lot yes. better yep. at the end. I thought it was fantastic. It was fantastic. Like I said, great horses, great riders, and there was no, there was no wrong way to judge it. I mean – no. The ones that made mistakes made mistakes, and the rest were great. Yeah. No. Fun class. Yep. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Hope you had a good time. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Parlanti, the official sponsor of the USHA, introducing the new Parlanti Vegan Collection. Parlanti Kent and Malmo models reduce rubbing while increasing the feel, breathability, and comfort of your ride. Visit a Parlanti store today and try on a pair of their vegan boots. CWD Cellier, the official saddler of the USHJA. We thank them for being the official saddle of the USHA back again for 2024. They've been a sponsor of the USHA since 2016. Visit your CWD dealer at a horse show near you. Neutrina, the official feed of the USHA. From all life stages to senior to special care, Neutrina Safe Choice Horse Feed offers nutrition for every age and activity level. Essex Classics, for more than 30 years, they have led the way in show shirts. The Grayson Jockey Club and Research Foundation, the supporting sponsor of the USHA Young Horse Championships and Mainstream Munchies. Tonight for our horse winners, we have Mainstream Munchies, and we'll turn it over to John, to Brian Lookabill, and Jason Porter to take us through the prize giving ceremony. I'm Oliver Kennedy. I've been here with Haven Schott and Sandy Farrell bringing you the action. We thank you all for joining us here on Clip My Horse, the USEF Network and on the Wellington International website. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. ...in the show ring. And mentioning the show ring, we are just about to bring them back in for our round two competition. We'll do so in reverse order, and we'll start things off here with the 12th place finisher out of a big field of contestants that attempted to be a part of our finals here tonight. Again, only the top 12 got the right to come back into the round two action, so we have to offer our congratulations to each and every one as they return here. We'll begin by congratulating that 12th place finisher and that's going to be Nottingham and Scott Stewart coming back in they were the front runners in the uh, first round coming back as they finish on a 12th place 
uh, position here with the Dr. Betsy Parker on Saturday night. In the 11th spot this evening, it'll be Amanda Stige with Lafitte de Muse. That was the entry of Cheryl Olsten, another past winner of this class, finishing in 11th place this evening. In that 10th position, it was an early front runner and one of our junior riders by the name of Parker Peacock, riding acclaim into 10th. And we salute her, again, as a junior rider going up against some of the best professionals in the field to still be among the top 12. Vivian Yowen had knowingly for Partridge Hill Equestrian, and she will finish up as well among the top of the field as she earns a ninth spot this evening. Then professional rider out of Michigan, Greg Krolik, and Catwalk will finish in eighth place. Catwalk the Renowned Farm LLC entry. Finishing in seventh is Kate Conover, and she had two rides in the top 12 this evening. And the uh, eighth place finisher is Damas de Tener for Autumn Janeski. Then it's on to Kate Hagerty and Magic Moment, who finished up in seventh place. Magic Moment, actually in sixth place, that is, for a Magic Moment. Magic Moment, the Hagerty family entry. Nick Hennis rode Circa, one of his two entries, into the fifth position here tonight. That, of course, was his 3-6 rider for Glade Run Farm, LLC. And then we get into the top four rides with John French having both fourth and third place honors. John French, another past winner of this event tonight with two in the top 12. Babylon is among them. The Marnell Sport Horses and Welcome Back Equestrian entry again finishing in fourth. And then Paradigm was his 3-9 entry for Meredith Lipke and that one will be third. Kate Conover's highest ranked entry of the evening will be Queen Celeste and that one is your runner-up of the night. Queen Celeste for Glade Run Farm LLC finished up again in second place and of course the uh, second to last to show there was uh, Nick Hennis and McQueen, and they emerged with the top average of 91.20. The Welcome Back Equestrian LLC entry will be coming into the ring next, and they'll be here to lead that victory pass in our $100,000 WCHR Peter Weatherill Palm Beach Hunter Spectacular. We'll ask you to go ahead and put your hands together as they lead the way in our round of honor. Independent round of honor for our champion of the night here, Nick Hannis and McQueen. Again, taking the top call with the 91.2 average. It's a lot of hard work to get to this final and, of course, to get into the top 12 alone, but making it to the best position among the elite field of contestants here is certainly a big honor, and Nick Hannis earned that right with McQueen. So Nick leading the way for the victory, Kate Conover, John French, Kate Hagerty, Greg Krolik, Vivian Yellen, Parker Peacock, Amanda Stege, and Scott Stewart in line there also in the top 12 positions. Well, we're going to keep with us now our top two finishers, your champion and reserve entries of the night here in the Palm Beach Hunter Spectacular, and they'll be making their way back in to pick up those prizes. 
And again, join the elite list of past winners. But right now, Nick Hennis and McQueen will be your top contestant. Welcome back, Equestrian's entry again with a 91.20 score. And they're going to be receiving the Dark Cottonet Trophy donated by Jim Green. And presenting the award here this evening, USHJA Executive Director Kevin Price, WCHR Task Force Vice Chair Carl Whedon and USHJA Awards Coordinator Kristen Rosenberg welcoming Nick into the winner's circle. They're also joined by Erica Quinn, Jim Hagman, Lainey Walkenbach, Adolfo Suniga, who is the groom of the winning mount here, as well as Ethan May. So let's hear a collective round of applause for our winning horse and rider, as well as those who are here to support that top horse and rider combination. The top contestant receiving $30,000 in prize money. The custom embroidered jacket to the rider, owner, trainer, and groom. The uh, cooler, as well as that custom flowered neck wreath. A CWD gift certificate, as well as certificates from Parlanti. A certificate as well for an Essex Classics show shirt, ribbons, and neck sashes. And that winning groom, by the way, as we mentioned, being Adolfo Suniga, will also receive a $500 cash award and we salute them as well for uh, producing such a top-level mount, being so ready for this competition tonight. And at this time, we are going to welcome representatives from Mainstream Streamlined Horse Transport. Our champion horse will be presented with some Mainstream Munchies for all of their hard work. So let's hear it one more time for the winning mount, McQueen, and their well-earned dessert here on Saturday night. There again, it's McQueen with Nick Hennis for Welcome Back Equestrian, your 2024 champion of the $100,000 WCHR Peter Wetherill Palm Beach Hunter Spectacular. We also want to salute our reserve champion of the night, Kate Conover and Queen Celeste, receiving $22,000 in prize money, an embroidered saddle pad, ribbon, neck sash, and the cash award as well to the uh, trainer and groom. And again... Kate earned that win aboard Queen Celeste for the owner Glade Run Farm, LLC. Along with Queen Celeste and Kate Conover, Mitchell Robinson also on hand here tonight out of Uphill Farm. And again, we salute her, the runner-up average there, the reserve champion, a 90.16 score. High performers throughout the course of the week and into the evening feature event here in our Under the Lights $100,000 Palm Beach Hunter Spectacular. Congratulations again to both our champion and reserve finishers. And again, we'll welcome back representatives from Mainstream Streamline Horse Transport, again presenting the reserve champion with their well-earned desserts here tonight. By the way, those who finished up in the third through 12th positions pick up saddle pads, ribbons, neck sashes as well. And on behalf of the USHJA World Championship Hunter Rider Program, we'd like to offer congratulations to all of our qualified 
qualifiers here at the 2024 Hunter Spectacular. And again, a special congratulations to Nick Hannes, Welcome Back Equestrian, and McQueen on the victory as we round out another great Saturday Night Lights performance here during the midway point of the Winter Equestrian Festival. And of course, while we're finished with the evening performance, while these final presentations are made, we do have one more day of competition, namely a feature event year after year in our WCHR events, that being the Peggy Cohn Adult Hunter Classic, which will be our feature event all day long here in the International Ring tomorrow. So go on home, get some sleep, and we look forward to having you tune back in tomorrow as we get back underway with our final day of these week six activities. Thank you very much and have a good night.